Welcome to the World Wide Web, everybody. Hope you all are having a great and fantastic day. Welcome to the very first episode of From the W, a brand new podcast about Jesus and gaming. And I hope you all have uh, come expecting uh, uh, some great discussion. We've, we've got a lineup ready to go tonight. So what we're going to do, my name is Mr. Zach Lee. I'm a Christian, I'm a husband, I'm a father, streamer over on YouTube. Yeah, most people uh, give me crap for that, but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> having a good time, and I decided, you know what, we need to figure out a new way to do the podcast game. We need to find a new way to do the roundtable thing, right? So... We've gotten together with other Christian content creators, people in the space. We decided to make a show about it. So welcome to the World Wide Web. My name is Mr. Zach Lee. Well, anyway, welcome in. Uh, we'll just, I guess we'll do it this way then. So, uh, Chris, we'll start with you. So, let's do a uh, name and like... I don't know, man. Like name and like what what you're doing in the content space and like yeah, 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 yeah. And how 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 do we uh how do we know each other that that we're here together today? We're gathered Absolutely. here today. So, yeah. So I'm Chris Oldham. I uh am in the content space more in the background. I work with content creators um small and large and help them grow their business and really treat their content creation as business. Um, especially in the Christian content world. And Zach and I know each other from meeting on Twitter and trying to uh, trying to create content together and playing a little bit of Fortnite and planning big things that we've yet to take action yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all my fault. <laughs> so uh, we'll move around the circle. Will, what's going on, man? Will Pog. Tell us about yourself, man. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's uh, later in my country. Oh, that's right. And th th then I'm normally up, but uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, I'm Wilpog. I stream on Twitch. And uh, basically, all we do is chat and drink coffee in my, in my channel. So <laughs> uh, that's, that's all we do. That's basically it. That's literally uh the summary of my channel so um but yeah so and and all we do is have fun conversations everything from faith to depression mental health and and uh and we just try to keep an open and uh welcoming place for everybody so yeah yeah super cool super fun it's it's one of those things where it's like it's just it's it's coffee and chatting and it's awesome. I love it because I got, hey, coffee. I got coffee. Yeah. Co having coffee and talking is a, is a summary of basically 90% of business. Like that just summarizes almost everything. Unless you're holding a tool, then it's usually having coffee and talking. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Christian Ninja, what up, man? Welcome in. Yo, what up, dude? What up, dude? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm um, I'm super awesome. I'm, I'm so... late. I feel like <laughs> such a such a youngin being up with the, it's dark outside. Uh, <laughs> it's after supper. I'm not asleep. This is great. There you go. There you will, go. Will I make it the whole podcast? That the yet to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us about yourself uh, again. I guess your name, your your what what you do in the content space, and uh, uh, yeah. My name's Al. Uh, they call me Christian Ninja. I call me Christian Ninja, and then I tell other people to call me Christian Ninja, so they have to. The uh, I am a go. content creator. I'm a full-time uh, online Twitch missionary. I am a mentor to Christian streamers, and I was a pastor for 16 years. Master's Divinity, been a preacher for for that whole time. God called me into the into full-time online Twitch ministry, and I mean Twitch ministry, not just live, not just online ministry, but Twitch ministry. About a year ago, celebrated my stream anniversary, like, I don't know, two weeks ago or something like that. It has been a ride, man. It's a tiger by the tail ride. Yeah. Dude, it's, oh. it's, it's interesting 
like just the whole the whole thing there's a lot to live streaming and and, and just figuring that out there is but a yeah. lot to write live stream yeah yeah absolutely well good to have you guys here good to have you guys here um so uh, uh <clears throat> the 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 goal of the podcast i guess is to actually bring conversation about things that might not be discussed elsewhere um you know sometimes we talk about like different video games that get played and it's like oh should a christian be playing that game or something you know and and, and it's always interesting no, no, yeah answer, no. and exactly some of these games i go what in the world this is crazy uh um, tetris you're not allowed to play it and I, even then you have to keep the sound off yeah yeah listen mm. you have to live like you're amish can you tell I was raised Baptist? <laughs> I was raised Mennonite, bro. I didn't have... I wasn't allowed to play Halo when it came out. <laughs> oh, we're man. just raised Southern, so you couldn't uh, watch the Smurfs because they were evil. Really? Darn right they were. Not as evil as Pokemon, but pretty close. Oh, yes. Pokemon was another one for me. Oh, man. I had... I had Pokemon. Of Pokemon is... At least in Brazil, like the you know, Christians were just all about it, and like, oh, this Pokemon represents this kind of god, and if you play, yeah. you uh, are worshiping that god. And I'm like, oh, okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I was the same. Yeah, I, I was like the same way. Um, the. Uh, I, I talked to my parents when I was little. I'm like, I'm like, well, Pokemon. Like, my cousin was playing it. It was this awesome fad that was happening, which it's still a fad today, which is awesome. But like, I'm like, why can't I play it? You say no. Why? And they're like, Do you know what Pokemon means? And I'm like, What? And they're like, Pocket Monster, Monster Zach. And I'm like, It's a monster. <laughs> Like oh, that's which that is was the word for demon, which yeah, is the word for Satan, yeah. which takes you to hell. Zach. Yeah, yep, yeah. And it was the word monster, oh, and that's what they were stuck on. And then I'm like, that's not that bad. And they're like, but we, but we said no. You know how many times your parents are like, because I yeah. said so. Yeah, that's where it ended. It was just yeah, like, <laughs> like in, in pocket, not just pocket monster. It was like pocket monster, and and here it was like, uh, you know what pocket monster means. Yeah, it means that they're all, all they want is to take money from you and and out of your pockets and into their banks, which is kind of true with <laughs> Nintendo, but still A business. Though. Like it, that, that was sort <laughs> yeah. of the, the stigma. DLC stigma before they were DLC. Like, yeah. right, I mean, the only way that right. could be more true is if they were owned by Disney. Yeah, right. No, right. Man, true. <laughs> Doing some uh, troubleshooting. On the way here. Just imagine. Imagine if you were sitting there playing Pokemon with a friend who was playing D D, listening to rock music while dancing. You that's like a it, it would be like the Bill and Ted's elo, like like phone booth would come up out of the floor and give you a direct invitation to go straight to hell. <laughs> yep. Yep. For the floor drops out, just doom. Yep. Gone. gone. He's mine now. I've got him. <laughs> the pokemon it was, was the last yeah. straw so well then here's the funny thing too when it came to like shooting games i wasn't allowed to play shooting games and i'm playing like i tried to play halo once at home i borrowed the game from my cousin my mom's like you will not play this game in this house okay whatever okay i'm gonna listen but then i got star wars battlefront my parents were okay with star wars like it was okay if i liked star wars watched star wars i played battlefront my mom walks into my room while i'm playing battlefront shooting guns what game is this? I said, it's Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, okay. And she shut the door and walked out. <laughs> Star Wars must have been okay. So. Yes. Space wizards are good. Yeah. Yeah. As long as well, they're in space. Like killing, isn't that killing what Halo is? Killing stormtroopers is okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're not real, Zach. They're not yeah, real. Yeah, they're not real, Zach. Yeah, they're not real. Yeah. They're clones. Halo's real. But those monsters... I mean, obviously, I've yeah, that, that I've electric got Pokemon chinchilla. Now, that'll... So. <laughs> I don't have any stormtroopers back here. I've moved on. <laughs> so yeah, um, what a yeah, what like 
I've heard stories of like people that were actually went down like through each of the Pokemon. They saw a picture of Pokemon and they were like, oh yeah, that's this one that likes to do this and this. And then if you read the description of the Pokemon, it like matched identically. It was weird. I did read that one time, but it was like, they, I read about, I think it was Nidoran maybe. It's like, he likes to scratch things. That was a stab in the dark. Yeah, but but these are the same people that are that wake up and it's seven forty seven on the clock and they feel a call to missions. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like this, yeah. it does. Yeah. It, this is it's not yeah. what I would call the the most accurate of, of discernment. Yeah, I I heard a thing once on the radio. This guy was talking, and they're like, "What does it mean when you see different times on the clock?" And like the one was like, "If the time, if you look at the clock and that instant you look at the clock, the time changes. Something good's gonna happen." I was like. Well, like I was confused by that. Like, I that, see. I mean, I you, see you lived another minute. Clock. As soon as I wake up, I see different times on the clock. <laughs> when I check on my phone, it's yeah. just like it's it's well, it's it's six. Is it six o'clock? Is it five o'clock? Is it seven? I don't know. Until my eyes fully open. So yeah, yeah. Now, if you look at the clock and it's six sixty-six, then I think you need to start worrying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you think about That's, it, numerology was the first evil before astrology and before Pokemon. Was it? Like, how so? Like, how so? Like, because I know that they say, like, 777 is good. About numbers. Yeah, like... People still do. It's still, it's still, a, big, it's still a big thing in Brazil, uh, 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 numerology, so... Uh -huh. Yeah, there are a lot of countries that believe people. that they're spoken to through numbers, just like you're spoken to through stars for astrology. Mm-hmm. And people will will baptize that too, and then they'll take like like the the direct middle of the Bible, or they'll take you know they'll take their pages and they'll go through and they'll find the exact center, or or they'll count all the words and find out the exact middle word and what's the middle letter, and they'll use that as a as a way to kind of interpret out what that means and be able to apply it to their lives simply by using the page numbers as according to Zondervan, right? Or a few years ago, where it was the uh, number of wood used in Noah's Ark determined that we we're all going to die in twenty eighteen or something like that. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a pastor with a pretty large following that um, a couple million people followed him. Um, one of the kind of a mega church, I believe it was Southern Baptist, and he uh, he he was a hardcore believer that based on the, the the numerology of the Bible that he had figured out the exact date. How'd that he go? Did it, did it pay yeah, out? yeah, yeah, right. Are we yeah, so no, we got left behind? Out, or uh, well, come to find out, there was a lottery numbers. He just played the he he just. He gets the wrong guess. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happens the day after they go. Yo, I realized my math was a little bit off. Hold on, let me go check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they come back and they're like, "Hold on, now I know." It's also clear to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you see? By my was... other, by my next book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. By the way, my mom chimed in in chat. She said, "I think Pokemon's still bad." Ha ha. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's in the chat. That's no mom's, good. Mom's in the chat. I can't talk that anymore. That makes things awkward. Yeah, right? No, I don't care. <laughs> I'll let her know that I thought it was ridiculous. She thought Pokemon was bad for me. <laughs> but I will say, I, listen, I will say opening packs of trading cards is addicting. Holy cow, is that addicting. And I could waste Dude. billions of dollars if I had it. I like it. it oh, got I watch people do it online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's relaxing. It's relaxing when you watch them uh, do it online. And and yep. and, and uh, I, it it got me so like t tempted to to get into it, you know. But I'm a, a you know original Pokemon kind of guy, so I'm not into like I don't know it, like. 99% of the new Pokemon that, that came out after the original 151. Yes. So, uh, uh, so I, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I, I, I want to just open packs and collect the original, you know, the original card. And, and I just want to get the best of each Pokemon every time. And turns out that they don't make those anymore. And the ones that are around you pay thousands of dollars just mm -hmm. for the pack and and i'm like oh, mm -hmm. okay well that's a short-lived uh dream so <laughs> yeah no kidding, right? yeah to open the originals so, is like 
it's like tens of thousands of dollars to open those like original packs yeah. and stuff. It's crazy. So yeah, someone educate so. me. So I know nothing about Pokemon. So what came first, the cartoons or the game? The game. It was the game. Yeah. The game's first. Yep. So how old is the game? Was it ninety nine? Like no, was it ninety? No, ninety eight. Was it ninety eight? I mean, when? Like, like it? When did it come to North America? Right, the, you know that kind of thing. Because like, it was pretty it was, big. Is, yeah, that would make sense. Pretty big overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I mean, I I got a favorite uh, streamer. His name is Ferg, and he plays that MLB uh, uh, Twenty Two, the show, right? Yeah. And it uh, it's got a mechanic in it that as you you play and as you earn and as you do better, you get cards. Like you get packages of cards, and it's not just like your players show up on cards. You literally it'll be a a row of just like you'd go by at the store mm -hmm. and then you open them up and out comes your your cards and and you just see him like he just lights up like a christmas tree every time these cards are on there and then you see his absolutely crestfallen and heartbroken every time he sees what actually comes out of it yeah. but he said you know you sit there and you start feeding this this machine then i flipped over to another guy and he's just starting he's a a christian missionary dude starting streaming and he's playing the uh soccer fifa Right, so yeah, he's playing FIFA thing. and we're talking, and then all of a sudden it opens up. There's all the cards again, and I'm like, so this is just a mechanic that people have figured out gets people absolutely just addicted to opening these things up because they're gold and they're pretty and it's got this nice animation and everything. It's, it's a cash grab because it, it they pay for it, right? They pay for these packs, so they can, yeah, to, yeah, to build their fantasy the team, ones. to build their yeah. fantasy unless team. you grind. Yeah. like you could either spend seventeen thousand hours playing or give them money. Oh, okay, gotcha. But, but gotcha. when you have when you have kids when you have kids playing, and you're talking fourteen to twenty five, the stats are pretty heavily that they're purchased versus earned. I think it's like eighty five fifteen um, that is purchased versus earned. So I mean, yeah. whether that's Madden or baseball or FIFA doesn't matter. It's 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 yeah. it's quite the gas grab. And 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 that's and that's why they don't change much from year to year like like that, that's one of the biggest complaints of fifa players is because the campaign mode and the gameplay the mechanics they change nothing they don't improve on anything why because they focus on the packs they focus on the 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 buying or the selling of these packs uh and 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 that's what makes them money so they don't really care about the campaign or single player you know uh mechanics and gameplay so so i mean that's of part of all complaints that's part of a lot of different games like is anything that gets big suddenly you've got these people out there that will grind the the snot out of it just so they can get the elite items or they can mm -hmm. get the you know the rare stuff and then they'll go sell it for real money like there were time like it was what five six seven years ago or whatever people were grinding out like these uh super rare things in i can't remember the the, the game but then they'd go online and they'd sell it for like a thousand dollars or they'd take a character and oh, they'd wow. build it up to level 80 and then sell it for like a thousand dollars yeah right? wow because they the were doing that like crazy play. yeah but then yeah. but then you find out that in the background you've got these like this sweatshop about like like 40 chinese guys sitting around in the worst like computers in the worst environment spending 19 hours a day grinding out on this thing you know farming whatever just so they can get these things so they can turn it over to their boss who will then you know take their character and, and go like it's yeah it, it gets pretty pretty brutal so it wasn't just once like you start digging yeah. down yes yeah, so it's not just like one or two guys that are like you know, hey, let's build up some accounts and sell them. This is like people are making businesses out of hiring people to sit and do this. To sit and, yeah, like today you're going to go make farm wheat. And I mean, that's what you're doing. You're going to go do that and you're going to do 19 hours of it. And then when you're done, we're going to take your character or take the gems or take the whatever. And we're going to go turn that into a profit. Now, that being the person doesn't get the profit. They're an employee. Yeah, but even yeah. then, they're under slave labor, right? Right. And right. to that point, yeah, what... Much. What they would do is, is if you, so I have a client that that was how he got, kind of got started in the gaming world, was he was selling and making 60, 80 grand a year, earning on these and then turn around and selling them. And so now you imagine if you, is, if he's doing that kind of part-time and you've got five, 10 people doing that full-time and you've got somebody who's actively like selling them, building a business and selling them. Now you're talking about somebody's probably making half a mil to three quarters of a mil 
on probably any, and this is American dollars, right? He's making, they're making American dollars after three quarters of a mil, and they're generally paying somebody anywhere from 20, 20 to 80 cents a day, depending on the nation. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. See, that's where it's wow. wrong. As far as some guy that's like, hey, listen, me and my friends are going to make a business out of doing this, and then they just grind and sell and grind and sell. Great, more power to you. But if you're going to hire people for peanuts, almost literally, then yeah, that's where you're going wrong. I mean, yeah. if you were to turn that into a business, that's a great idea. If people are willing to buy something, sure, make it into a business. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's an equivalent. Like, you're working. And your work deserve is effort. Your effort deserves uh, remuneration. That's that's just how things work. It's just well, like you said, when it becomes like that fast fashion thing where you know Nike is, is selling shoes out of sweatshops, or if you, if you've got the you know whatever you got you know coffee beans or chocolate or pick the thing that's popular anywhere in the world that the reason that it's so cheap the reason your chocolate bar only costs you a dollar instead of costing you seven is because it's on the back of people who aren't being paid. Yeah. Right. The the reason your coffee only costs you so much and the reason you can go to the store and see walls and walls of it is because the people that are picking it aren't getting paid. You know, the the reason that you, like they, like I don't don't get me started on this, but really the the amount of blood, sweat and tears that is put into the products that we generally don't even think about over here because they're so normal, whether it be the shirt on your back or whether it be the the, the material you're using or the dollar store that you go to, there is an entire world out there that is producing that for North America and not all of it is pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I actually and, have a, and if you, go ahead. If you look at the DOJ, I mean, there, there was stuff published about the chocolate industry specifically, you know, you have Nestle and Hershey's and Mars and all of them and just how deep, you know, to this point, how deep those were, especially with child labor, but you go, um into stay in the u.s and you look at the produce world vegetables any farming 90 percent of that 90 percent of the people in that world that's doing that work is not paid mm-hmm. they're getting really? to stay in a trailer in some farm like I've, I've gotten to visit them with government agents in california and go to a place where this is what's being grown Yet all the guys are sleeping twenty five guys in a trailer, and that's their pay. Their pay is they get, they get to mm-hmm. eat, they get to sleep in that mm-hmm. trailer, but there's no actual you know money going to them. Mm-hmm. Wow! But that's how we keep the, the produce so cheap in the U.S. Slavery in the U.S. Slavery around the world is not over. It's just no. it's just more commercial. It's more it's more hidden. It's well, it's more it you know, I guess name. wiggly. You know, you know just, give, just it give it another name. name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, business. I mean, in th- in that sense, it's less. It's not slavery. It's exploitation. Totally different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> label. Yeah. If you will, if you label it as that, then is like, oh, okay, fine. It's not slavery. Fun. Sorry, Chris. You were saying. I, it, I was just saying it's it's basically they found ways to make it some sort of indentured servitude versus because you know you know. I've been into some of those sweatshops in China, some of those in the Philippines. Um, I've been to, to a couple in Brazil. And, and when you go to those, when you look at them, the way they get around it is, well, we give them something. We, they don't have to do it. But when you see how aggressive and how forced it is and how nasty it is, at the end of the day, for us in 2022, it's slavery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a I have a friend that uh, he wanted to start a coffee shop, and he realized like that same sort of thing that was happening. He wanted to roast his own coffee beans, all that kind of stuff. And he's like, "Listen, the way it's actually set up is not right." So he himself has gone down to South America. I don't know where he goes exactly, but he goes down to South America and actually like goes to where they're planting these coffee beans, where they're doing all this stuff, and he's like. He's the retailer going to the source. And through that, he's able to pay them more, but also still Mm -hmm. charge a competitive price for his coffee. And but that's the problem. 
when he comes back and he he does all that work and he tries to make it ethical and pay the workers and stuff, he comes back. He can't sell you a cup of coffee for 99 cents. No. He can't. No, he doesn't. Right? And but... so you have a, a consumer out there that they'll walk into his coffee shop and he'll and he'll hold this thing and he'll say, okay, this is a cup of coffee and here's all the reasons why it costs $2.25, yeah. which is actually pretty good for what I'm trying to do. And they'll go, that's stupid. I can go down the street and I can go to... Star, you know, I'm not going to say Starbucks. Starbucks isn't <laughs> terrible, but I can go to whatever, you know, and I can get one for, for 99 cents. So why would I ever shop here? And trying to educate the consumer on going, actually, you know, what you're getting is hurting people is almost impossible mm -hmm. it, because people just want to stick their, their uh, fingers in their ears because they don't want to be told that their favorite product, their favorite w shopping, their favorite treat, their favorite whatever, the cleaning supply that they're using is actually hurting people and they have to change and make it cost double they don't want nobody and, wants to hear that yeah and to your point if if that wasn't true hawaiian coffee or any coffee that is um grown and roasted in the u.s would be more popular mm -hmm. i mean you've got three, three states that currently grow and and commercialize their own coffee and none of it does well in the u.s I, mean, I didn't even know that was, that it was a thing. Yeah, really? Hawaiian coffee is about $30 per 10 ounces. So if you went and got a bag of their, a bag of their beans or a bag of their ground coffee, it's usually from 30 to 45 bucks. That's like pushing Cappy Luwak levels. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's and, what happens. And we all know what Cappy Luwak coffee rich. goes through, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes through hell, yeah. It, it's not a good place, <laughs> yeah. But I mean... It's out there with the Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> That's its power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna have a Pokemon, come on. If you're gonna have a Pokemon, get the one that'll crap out uh, luxury coffee, right? Yep. Yep. Where's he at? We've got an ice cream cone as a Pokemon. Where's the coffee bean? Come on. Yeah. We're It'd be my new favorite Pokemon. He'd be sitting right here on my shelf. Yeah, it'd be Luwakimon. Yeah. yeah. Luwakimon. Yeah. Wait, did I say Luwakimom? It's Mon. 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 Luwakimom is a very different, uh, that's a different website. <laughs> yeah, very different thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think they're known as Karens. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Go. Yeah. The Karens. The yeah. Karens. Listen, I went to Starbucks the other day. I got some for like, Vanilla, what was it like? Blonde roast espresso vanilla something. It was a venti. It was seven dollars and seventy five cents for my coffee, and it hurt a little bit having to pay that. When she said seven seventy five, mm -hmm. went oh. I, I, I might make that I, a once I, a month trip. I enjoy trip. Starbucks. I do too. I, I I enjoy Starbucks, and and I go every time I go to the states and stuff like that. But but I do realize that they do charge too much for their for their coffee uh, especially because they they don't pay fair wage, wages to to the farmers you know what i'm saying so they're charging mm -hmm. more like they're they're charging like say uh you know u.s u.s raised coffee prices but but uh, but they they're not paying that you know they're not paying that so well it's like it's like the fashion in the fashion industry you've got uh uh, you know Chanel that sells you know a, a bag for thousands and thousands of dollars and it's made in Taiwan you know what I'm saying so so you, they're they're paying slave wages and they're charging a lot you know what I'm saying a mm -hmm. lot so so it's not always it's not always like oh you know you get a church that uh, a, a shirt that's cheap uh, because it was, you know, because of slave, slave labor, it's, you can buy premium stuff that comes from slave labor, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's kind of sad. Now, do we, yeah. as, as Christians have a moral obligation to be investigating this stuff constantly and making sure that everything we do is, is morally operate because, and this is, this is a, a issue that I've had in the past because, you know, you start, you know, you looking around at how many things in your house are made by Nestle. You know, how many things in your house really are fast fashion? How many, you know, like if I want a, a fancy shirt and I want to get it, you know, screened and stuff, I have to go 
figure out where they're getting the actual shirt, what the brand is of that shirt that they're going to be screening. So for me to be able to sell my merch, there's it's an endless thing. At some point, it gets so overwhelming. I think that's right. part of the weapon is that it, the details and the and the searching gets so overwhelming that it becomes impossible for your average consumer to be able to uh, to real figure out whether or not it's it's moral so you throw your hands in the air and you go forget it i'll just you know i don't know what i'm doing i'm just gonna hope somebody fixes it do we have an obligation as you know as believers as churches see and i believe so and i'm kind of weird about it i think i think when you think about it when you it's one thing to go and search for it but just look at what you what is easily accessible to your knowledge right so like for example i refuse to allow myself or my wife or my kids to eat subway subway knowingly allowed children to be abused for eight years and hit it i i feel i feel morally morally obligated by my faith to say i'm not gonna eat subway or nestle for example same thing because it, it's something that has been made very public it's not like your little corner place like it like to your example the t-shirts right like never seen anything on the news specifically about the t-shirt now can i make an assumption that because it's made in china there's a high chance well yeah i could but there are certain things you know go to nike it's been made very clear that there's an abuse of, of individuals there's an abuse of of everything you can imagine from children to, to elderly to to women and yet that continues to be a business so for me I think when you when you become aware of it, it, instead of turning around and burying your head in the sand, it, it's time to at least say this is something I won't participate in due to my current knowledge. Yeah, Chris, can I ask you a question? Like you sound like a guy who's got yeah, experience in this arena. How is Nestle just? Let's just say Nestle. How are they getting away with it? If everybody knows they're freaking evil, if if all like half of their products are literally just you just take a child, you wring it out and then you put it into a into a bar like if that's what they're known for, why are they still in business? Because at the end of the day, we don't really care. And that's that's the honest answer, because when you go, Apathy. When, it doesn't affect us. Yes. Yeah. Well, and when the fact that the DOJ, the Department of Justice when they can sit there and say, we know for a fact, like they've listed Nestle specifically, we know as a matter of fact that they are doing this, that children are being used, and then they go, but we're gonna give them another year. And then 14 years later, we're gonna give them another year. And what they're saying is, we are so dependent on chocolate, we don't believe that chocolate can be produced at a, at a if we pay anybody a fair wage. So you know what, we're gonna turn a blind eye. It's the, the same reason that like I said earlier, agriculture fields, I mean, even now where marijuana is legal, marijuana fields are filled with, with abusive, harmful labor. And at the end of the day, the U.S. knows you're, you're in states that are screaming in California, screaming about the rights of, of employees, but then we'll turn a blind eye. And at the end of the day, you can't blame anything other than the fact that they just don't care. It's, it's better to have a cheap price for the things that you don't want to pay excessive amounts for than to hold somebody accountable. Okay, then let me ask this follow-up question. Uh, now that it's the, the Christian Ninja Show, Zach, you can you can just hang out there. It's I'm gonna fine. go make coffee uh, while we're talking about <laughs> it. So, my my, que my question to you is then, how do you change it? If 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 apathy is the problem, apathy is probably the hardest thing to change. Like, I'd rather you be angry at me than apathetic about me. You know what I mean? Because I can I can figure out anger. We can talk about that. But if you're apathetic and I can't even get you into the room, that's impossible. So how, how, how do you battle that level of national, international apathy? So, how do you so fix it's, it? like, it, it's like being anywhere else. So when, when you look at how things, are, how things are corrected anywhere in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, sorry, anywhere in the world, it, it usually is groups of people aligning themselves to say, this is unacceptable and we stand against this. So in the U.S., we have, we have an opportunity as Christians to do that on any topic. If Christians united on any given topic, whether it's pornography, whether it's abortion, whether it's uh, abuse of labor, whatever it could be, if Christians united on it, it would stop. Because if, if, if roughly, let, let's, let's downplay what the, what the supposable numbers are, right? So let's say the numbers, only 60% of the U.S. is Christian, which supposedly it's much higher, but let's say 60%. If 60% of Christians or 60% of the, the nation is Christians and we all stopped eating Hershey's chocolate, mm -hmm. Hershey's doesn't exist anymore. 
Mm-hmm. Nestle, Nestle right, doesn't exist right. anymore. W- whatever it is, you know, wherever Nike, Nike doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, we saw it too. Talk, it's, talk about... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, so so people, so people, so people are like, if 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 we're not all going to get together, and my change doesn't make a difference, then I'm not going to, you know, why should I do anything about it? You know, so. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so I think it, that that's an issue too. I mean, it's exactly from an environmental perspective. Like you, we know, and this is this is one that gets me. They they look at me and they you know as your average consumer and they're like, you can't have plastic straws anymore, right? Because that's a big problem. And then you look to the left, and there is a major company that is producing like eight percent of the pollution on the planet. That one company. Right. And then you go over here and you've got like Coke destroying, you know, ecosystems. And then the government is, looks at me and goes, yeah, but, you, you know, like we're going to have to take one hundred and twenty five dollars out of your pocket every time you want a new car battery. Sorry, it's, 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 an, it's an ecology thing. Right. It drives me insane because if they were to take the energy that they're pouring into the average consumer that's making a pittance of a change and pour that into the actual companies that are causing the the problem we it would be solved i mean reasonably solved would it not i might well, I, I feel like I, i'm just a naive big baby because it seems to me like i'm like well it, how is it hard to walk up to them and go so okay stop dumping your crap in the water oh, and if you keep dumping the crap in the water you're not yeah. allowed to do business anymore it's illegal right that seems easy to me am i i don't know i've always been a big well, well, well yeah baby. instead what, they what come after like? us and say don't dump your plastic into the ocean they're telling yeah. us not to do it rather than, yeah, rather than figuring and, out from and, and the big company. A, I think there's two, there's two things to take from that. There's one, I think we underestimate, or maybe we just bury our hand, head in the sand, but we, we, we're not aware of the influence of those, those businesses. Like we pretend like, oh, it, it just doesn't happen. No, Coke, Coke, Coke tells the government, don't touch me. Um, Nestle yeah. tells the government, don't touch me. But then you look at the next yeah. side, and I don't know how much y'all followed the politician Andrew Yang, but Andrew Yang spoke about let's tax, let's tax all um, all businesses that are technology related, apps, etc. Let's tax them. Let's stop protecting them. Let's tax them. If you tax them, we can give a twelve hundred dollar a month stipend to every working American in the United States from those tax dollars alone. And all of a sudden, you know, it, it's like, wow, you, you can't do that. We, we, we need technology. We need, we, they, they, they can't afford to pay taxes. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. The, the, the guy making 24000 a year can afford to make, pay taxes, but the guy making $24 billion can't. And that's one of the things that happened over COVID, and, and they're, they're charting it more and more, is that the disparity between the poor, the middle class, and the, up, and the, the higher upper class, like the, the elites, has only stretched, right? The poor are in more trouble and the elites have made more money than they could possibly have imagined because of the co- of way COVID was handled. Well, I don't, I don't want to make Zach's show a conspiracy theory show, but... Yeah, I'll no, I love it. it. Let's do it. I'll, I'll say, get I'll, my tinfoil hat. Uh, we, let's do it. <laughs> I'll say this and then we, and then we, we can move on from, the, from blaming the government. But at the end of the day, like cur- currently I operate two coffee, coffee shops here in Oklahoma City. At the end of the day, what happens is, is as, as you are responsible, you know, as you're trying to purchase whatever it may be, if you're going to purchase in groceries, let's just talk about grocery shopping. So you're trying to buy groceries. Well, that grocery store is trying to purchase those groceries to sell them to you, right? And so right now, if, if you're selling pasta, whoever that wholesaler is, well, they know they can jack the price up. And what's happening is, is even the things that aren't necessarily inflation related, now's the time to go and make your money on it and blame inflation. So now mm-hmm. you're seeing places jack up their prices before they ever get to the business that will serve the consumer. Those prices get jacked up. Now the, the business has to react. Well, if the business is seeing a 10% increase, they're not going to increase their prices by 10% because now they need to make a little more. So they increase it by 15 so then what happens is, is all of this is going to just continue to cr- create deeper prices. And we've seen it in the state of Arizona with no inflation that's happened pretty dramatically um, over the time since 2008. But to my point, 
as you get to the bottom, as inflation goes down, as things start to settle, the prices don't return to where they were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So That's the housing have an market. Opportunity to make money for decades. They'll make money for decades off of this price increase. So Zach, I, I assume that when you said you got up for coffee, that was to go turn off your cell phone, shutter the blinds, right? No, I actually went yeah. and did a cup of coffee. I got to go get it because I started it. I got to go back and get it. It's actually that was a coffee. Bit, Zach. I was, you're supposed to feedback for the sarcasm and comment. Come on, work with the air. Come on, man. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> he abandoned the bit? I think that's illegal. Or well, he just made the bit better. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just a bad pitch. Yeah, exactly. And the host leave. See, he see he, when he pitched this thing, he said, "This is going to be a podcast where people are able to be calm, and then they're going to be able to leave. It'll be awesome because you know, every now and again, some some rando will just show up and have a talk." I didn't think the person coming and going would be Zach. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's the first one. He was the first one. Yeah. I mean, does the, the, the coffee run actually count as leaving? I mean, <laughs> you, 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 this is your fault. I mean, if you hadn't kept mentioning coffee, Zach would have never had the bell on. And then, he's, he's, there's and a problem. Then he's a, the problem. He didn't have it. He's a consumer. <laughs> he's susceptible to these kind of impressions. I'm it's sorry. It's Starbucks, too, so. Ooh. Cinnamon Dolce. It's so good. Listen, I know it's, Star- <laughs> it's Starbucks is good coffee. It's good. I so like Zach, it. You, you're... You have to remind me. I got to send you a couple bags. Sounds good. Are they already ground, or am I going to have to grind them myself? I prefer if you just on screen just grab the little mallet and crush them until they were grounded. Oh, okay. That's right. A mortar and pestle. That's what you. That's what you want. Yeah. Exactly. That'll work. That'll be that's that's content right there. Yeah, buddy. That's content. <laughs> 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 Grinding my beans. <laughs> Talk about ridiculous things people will watch, Zach. Hey. Let's see if this is one. Hey, uh, listen, if somebody sits on their phone, I'm just going to be grinding away at beans. All you got to do is chat with the people, look, occasionally look at the chat and just go, okay, cool. Do you get some Thousands of that coffee house jazz? You know, that, 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 that. Royalty free coffee house jazz. Uh, yeah. No, kind of playing in the background. DMCA you, you get, music. You get some nice warm colors. No, you got to get actual copyrighted music to play. That's what they do on TikTok. They play all the copyrighted stuff. That that is a whole big thing that I don't understand. Anyway, I'm just yeah, saying though TikTok that is yeah. weird. TikTok. Oh, is you weird. want me to start talking about TikTok? Because I got all jeez, I, I don't like that website. You you can go down the Pokemon path with TikTok. Yeah, that's true. I kid you. I, I, okay, if you want to be sad, and I mean truly sad, if you want to depress yourself to the place where you, you want to abandon humanity, like, I mean, get in a rocket ship and just leave, watch TikTok on mute. <laughs> because by the 10th swipe, you will be in tears for the, this gen- for the next Boy. generation that's coming yeah. out. Because it is... The, yeah. You don't appreciate mimes. That's what I just heard. <laughs> I would if they do. At least mimes will do something. Like the sound off. Yeah. <laughs> My thing is though is now nowadays all these companies are actually like getting on TikTok, and so it's like every third video is a, is a, a an ad or whatever. I'm just like, okay, this is getting too much now. It's almost too much. Hello, fellow kids. It would be so bad if it wasn't the same ads every That's time. That's true. I watched I mean, the like, Fortnite I think I only ones. have seen four ads. Really? Yeah, it's the same four every time. I either get the Fortnite one that starts up. Yeah, that's a good I'll one, the, though. I'll, I enjoy that one. I, I, yeah, the first ten times. <laughs> and then I get the boxers one. Yeah. And then I get the coffee one. And then I get the men's shirt that says, hey... Women get push-up bras, so let's get a push-up bra shirt for men. So it's shirt for the shirts, yeah, shirts for the dad bod. That's that that's that's the commercial. So I get those are the four ads I get, and I get them every Hold on. single Did, time. Chris, uh, I need you to back up for a minute because I have not seen this ad, and I need you to walk me through what you just described. Show us I the have... one you purchased. Yeah, which one did you get? <laughs> And explain how that works. So, so right now, if you go to the link in my 
<laughs> this shirt. Hashtag, yeah. Um, uh, well, no, it's so so. So essentially, they took the idea of a push-up bra and an idea of Spanx, and made it into a shirt, a men's shirt. And so it's fo- it's form-fitting at the top, and it's intended to bell out without a noticeable bell at the bottom, so that chubbier men like myself can wear that shirt and feel good about themselves and not chubby. I have seen that one. I would look like a Christmas ornament. I, I would be, you know, that, that big bell-shaped one with a, yeah, that's what I'd look like. They show a guy at, at the beginning that's like, don't like to look like this, and he's wearing, like, this terrible shirt that's, like, stiff as a board and, like, the sleeves stick, like, way out and stuff, and it's like, no, I don't look like that. the push-up bra. Like, yeah. what does a push-up bra have to do with a t-shirt? That's it's part of the, the ad? Only ad. Push up. Uh, that's the first line of the ad. Wow. Push up belly or something. The only ads I get I, in Brazil are from those zombie games with women with suggestive clothes and... and, and the mobile and game ones? The mobile game. Getting... The mobile zombie games. <laughs> you yeah, just that's hear the, all I get. <gasps> and then the zombies start Where did the zombie going, apocalypse ah, happen in Brazil? Ready? Beach? No, Listen, if there's... Oh, some site. Like, if there's an actual zombie apocalypse, like, I have a feeling humans are going to do okay. We've had a lot of practice with, between video games, mobile games, whatever you want to call it, movies. We, we, we know how to deal with the zombies. Zach, Zach, so, to, Zach. to your point, to your point, <laughs> most of the people that you just referred to are going to try to beat a zombie with a remote control. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. Dude, no. It, yeah. Okay, hold on. Well, we saw you, yeah, I played Fortnite. I know how to use a gun. No, we, we saw what happened during COVID. You'd have people out there sympathizing with the zombies. They'd be out there, like, <laughs> they'd be hugging the zombies. They'd have, like, a zombie hug fest on a street corner being like, you can't be judging these poor people. Uh, Let me hug them. And they'd, all, they'd actually be in line to that's, become a zombie. Come on. Ninja, that's, that's not fair, Ninja. That's not fair. They'd go buy toilet paper I mean, first. <laughs> that's right. They gotta, you got to panic first. That's right. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. 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 I'm still Man. okay. I mean, does anybody does anybody want to go to war with a Gen Xer? I mean, does does anybody would anybody want want to go to war? Hey, you, the U.S. is the company or the country that decided they wanted to draft like 18 year old girls to the to the front lines of the military. Yeah, all, that's bonkers. All, all I've got to say is, and I. <laughs> We'll stay off the political soapbox, but all I got to say is, is if you've ever been in the military or around the military and realized the tools they have, it it doesn't matter who's driving a drone. When you get a drone put in your forehead, it didn't matter who drove it. I guess so. that's true. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> See, no, I'm I'm still I'm still watching them fix bayonets and and charge in a line. So that's that's where I haven't I haven't studied war. These kids from Call of Duty can just hop in, hop in, fly a drone, and drop it on somebody's foreheads. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's see, that's yeah, where we need the AI true. to step that's in. True. If you can like create robots that like you control them with a controller, we're set. We're set. If you make millions, I knew of those, we'd get around good. to anime at some point. I'm glad. Now we're back. <laughs> now we're in anime. We can start moving oh. forward to I on the. We just went to Elon Musk. Yeah. Oh right? no, yeah, man. Let's Oops. just. Elon Musk just said he, he was building robots for war. Did he really? It was like a year ago, and, and he oh, said he okay. was building robots that would be able to handle anything in the, in the future, a decade or so, would probably be able to be used for military purposes. He, do you do you really he, believe that the series of, of satellites that he's putting around the globe is purely altruistic? Oh, uh, nothing is nothing in the business world is altruistic. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're talking that, that is Skynet. Could yeah. be. Literally. Could be. It is a net hey, around the earth that, that in the sky. That didn't, that, that didn't keep me from paying the $100 down payment for one, though. So, <laughs> That's so. exactly. <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing. That's okay. When, when it, the next time an alien comes to abduct you, you can thank Elon Musk for not happening. That's right. Because it c- couldn't get through. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I have I a reason he's gonna to use it, though. I have actually have a reason, so... Yeah, so, it, yeah. 
What was the I heard he's going to buy Twitter, though, I'll so work, we're, we'll I'll, be good. I'll work in the middle. But, of no, the he – well, he offered to buy Twitter, but I heard a thing that was like, if if they don't let it go through, then we – how – ah, never mind. I'm just not even going to say it because I don't remember how. No, I need that. Okay, so, so let me ask the question. How does Twitter change – when elon musk owns it what's the big difference between twitter now and twitter when elon owns it what's the I feel big like thing he everything would go well, just not go as in leave i'm saying everything would well, just it, twitter the, the would become 4chan 4chan yeah. Yeah, yeah it would become 4chan yeah, well, the, the main thing in the business world is that it would become a private company so it's not going to be a publicly traded company yeah. anymore which means Elon Musk has full control of it the same way he has full control of SpaceX, the same way he has full control of Tesla. Basically, he does anything he wants, but this time it's going to be with Twitter. So that could be, you know, interesting. That could be terrible. That could turn out somehow to be good. I don't know, but I, I, I leave the opinions for, uh, for whoever wants to give an opinion. I don't have a specific opinion on it, but did the you, main thing did is Chris... that he's going to have full control. Every single platform that has done that at any point of their of their existence, it has become a a light version of the dark dark web. You will have yeah. all kinds of things from you know inappropriate things with minors to extremely racist things to terrorist side things, domestic and foreign. It's just you you as as much as I believe in. Um, strongly believe in the first amendment right there's only so much you can do when it's that public because mm -hmm. you're going to have right. people that are going to especially on the keyboard these days <laughs> that are going to say some of the most crazy and asinine things you can imagine mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and they don't i mean look at twitter now right there, there's a toxic side of twitter where you're getting slandered and, and threats made and and racist things said and and it's been used by terrorist organizations, that's a fact. And that's with, that's with a barrier of entry of appropriate, you know, inappropriate and appropriate things to say and not say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting to see how how the board responds and, and how, how the shareholders respond, really. Yeah. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, the, it doesn't change the fact that he 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 only owns you know less than ten percent of the company, so it's not like he has a majority vote or anything. So he he still has ninety percent of the company need to convince you know. As Although he as, might, uh, and he just hasn't that. reported it yet. <laughs> true, true. He may double the offer. He's he's so crazy that he may just double the offer and be like, hey, okay, I'll just double my offer and and. And, and get you guys so yeah. so the belief is is he handcuffed them so basically by forcing this offer by making this offer public the board has to accept it yeah. because it is a financially pleasing deal and that is their responsibility or they deny it he he is threatened to to remove his stock so he's going to sell the stock what that does is that drives the price of twitter down twitter starts to starts to just fall apart and, and rattle off the wheels and now he comes in and purchases them for half the price <laughs> so if yeah. he's if he's wow. intent to purchasing them he 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 absolutely will because he's just buried them Chris, yeah. did, did you hey, you speak from experience that, i feel uh, like the the lemonade stands in your area are in are in real jeopardy from you is that true <laughs> are there little girls that you've made cry because you you <laughs> oligarchied right over top of them no, I, I pay all those girls really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's why lemonade costs six dollars a cup. <laughs> I told them, look, hey, your Zach, parents have, Zach, your parents Zach, have you Zach. come out here and you make zero dollars an hour. I'm offering you two bucks an hour. Yeah, yeah, hey, that's Zach. right. That's right. Yeah, what's up, Will? Uh, just Zach is here. Oh, is he? Yeah. We'll but he's in the wrong place. Hello? There. Hello? Hello? Just wanted to be our, friends, our friend in. Hi, Zach. I'm Zach. Where's he at? There he is. What up, Zach? There he is. Oh. Hello, hello. What's up, man? How, how are you? How are you doing tonight, gentlemen? Doing well. How are you? 
finally done with with chores and and getting food ready and everything. Well, chores don't you. end. You're just lying to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's a good point. That is true. It is. It is you like um, what do you call it? Uh, dishes never end. Yeah, you just you stopped doing chores. It doesn't mean they ended. You just stopped. <laughs> just correct. Oh, Will's gone. No, it's okay. We got a backup Zach now. Well, yeah, that's true. It's it, it's all good. <laughs> first Zach will just up and leave. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, which one's the backup? Just I feel like I'm the backup though. I'm just here, man. <laughs> I, t- I told you before we started that you got to rein me in, man. <laughs> you you need more powers. We didn't we didn't get it through an hour before a tinfoil hat was mentioned. Yeah, tin, yeah. There you go. Dude. <laughs> Surely, the, okay. What's what's the big topic, man? What's what's coming up next? Get I was gonna started. do. I was let gonna me, do me, another. I was gonna. Yeah. I was gonna quick do. Uh, we got we got an introduction here. Introduction, Mister. Uh, no, I guess it's not Mister. I'm Mister Zach. You're just Zach. I was gonna call you Mister Zach because <laughs> I was trying to be I, I polite. Just, just funny. That's and funny. like courteous, whatever you wanna call it. So I'll let, so, so just Zach, I'm just going to call you Zach. I don't know. So introduce yourself. Who are you? What you're doing? Like how, like, like, like what's your involvement in the content creation industry and, and, and plans and, and all that kind of stuff. All right. Well, so I am a, I've been a, a content creator and streamer for about three years on Twitch. And uh, what I do is I'm, I mostly play a lot of uh, a lot of FPS games because I'm very, very competitive um, and starting to get a little bit more like MMORPGs and some fun single player storylines um, just to make sure that I don't put all my eggs in one basket, but also all my stress levels in one game <laughs> because Call of Duty, Apex Legends, all that stuff can really and really make you go crazy um and then in the in the content creation space what i mostly look to do is to is to do things different um and and to do things from the the perspective of someone who's like brand new to uh, a community so if someone comes into the community and they know absolutely nothing about content creation or streaming or where to start um and stuff like that i like to stay up to date on uh technology and and peripherals for that stuff so i like to talk about that stuff too i like to be a very well-rounded person i was gonna name myself zach of all trades at the beginning of streaming yeah but that that didn't work out that name was that name was taken oh (laughs) that name was taken uh so i was i was looking at that uh twitch uh twitch username i was like ah someone has it and then youtube someone had it but it was a totally different guy oh <laughs> see then you gotta go you gotta change go change your name yeah yeah could have been like put could have been like tad of all trades yeah there we go could've, or jeff could've... <laughs> jeff of all trades or something yeah there you go <laughs> um i i should have i should have uh known to to take it to to the court you know Take it to, Zach take of it all to the trades court. is good. That's good. Like oh. I, I, I'm actively kind of in awe of how good that is. That that's really <laughs> good. I kind of feel bad for you now. Can I can I ask you a question though, uh, yeah. Zach? Mm-hmm. So this is something that actually came up today. I was talking about to somebody about what kind of games I play on stream and 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 their games and whatnot. And I was saying I got I basically got I, gamer ADD. Like when I when I sit down to a game, I'll play level one to three, and I'll be like, well, that was fun. And then I'm gonna I want another game. I want to do something else. You know, unless it's like a movie game like uh, Detroit Become Human, which is like it's just kind of yeah. ke- you keep watching because you're watching, right? I just I just get bored. So how do you or how does your community? How do people like like that are in sort of your realm of the first person shooter, grinding the same game, getting good at the same game, and trying to get that you know reticle in the exact right spot at the exact right moment every single time? How do you keep the joy in it without uh without going mad? Um I mean for me 
I, I think I just I really enjoy the the challenge and the the skill level that's involved once you start getting better at the game. Because there there's not really a skill cap. Like in, in some games, it's like you have three difficulties you can choose or four difficulties you can choose um, on how you want to play through the game. And you can get used to like patterns and things like that. But with FPS, it kind of is always changing. And I never know who I'm going to run into. I have no idea um, if I'm going to run into someone who's way above my skill level or someone who's not. Uh, plus the whole bunch of different um, like experimenting that you can do with the different guns and the different loadouts uh, that you can create. I find that super fun. But yes, I do find that it does um, kind of get monotonous over time. Uh, especially if you're like myself who plays with random teammates, which is mm. the least fun that I have That's during the day. Yeah, I mean, I, I've i reached out to large... Con like, so the people who are normally live when I'm live are like large content creators or other people in my similar circumstance who maybe I just haven't heard of yet. And so I've obviously mm. heard of the large content creators and I'm always looking for those um, smaller, medium-sized content creators to collab with but the large content creators they don't really want anything to do with me because they think i'm just there to but yeah, yeah, to, yeah to pretty much ride their coattails even though i'm like no i'm i'm actually really good at the game and i'm, I'm a very genuine human being who you know who wants to get to know you <laughs> as a person mm -hmm. but you just see it as the the person who comes in your chat and says hey can i play 10 yeah. times today by the way uh, in, Listen, in even alone. even as small, yeah, even as a small streamer, when somebody Dude. jumps in, is like, "Hey, can I play?" Like, depending, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost it's like well, I kind of want to do my own thing sometimes, you know. And and, and yeah. there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that, but yeah. Have any of you had the "Can I be mod?" thing within like the first two seconds? I've yeah. never had that. I'm like, yeah. I didn't realize that was a meme, but apparently it's a thing. You guys have had that? Yeah, not often today too. Today was today also, yeah. I've had I've really? had a lot of things. Oh yeah. Yeah, someone came in. Someone came in and like we weren't even talking about music. And he goes, Hey, play can you play this song? <laughs> I'm like I'm like, it's copywritten, so sorry, I, I can't I can't do that. Like I'm I'm trying to make sure he goes, No, 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 I play it on my stream all the time. Like it's totally <laughs> fine. I look up his name. He's not even a streamer. He's got zero followers, no videos, and he goes, Oh, my videos aren't up. I'm like, well, you don't put videos up. Yeah, I was like, I was like, because you were not <laughs> online. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. I'm not gonna play this song uh, where it's in German and Dutch, and I don't know the lyrics. But I looked them up, like in the middle of us talking, and I was like, these are inappropriate as heck lyrics. Yeah, I'm not playing this at all. Yeah, like the German cover of like Nicki Minaj or something like that. Yeah. Oh, like it was like. um Oh my gosh, it was pretty yes, Zach. close. To like... Tell us, tell us what this song was all about. Just, just lay it out mm. for us, Zach. Let's just <laughs> say detail, it had to do with um, uh, a type of club, and it had to do with um, uh, a like type golf? of word. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty club. much. Yeah, type of type of word. Golf uh, four. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's not too bad, Zach. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it was it was definitely. Maybe you're just more um, sensitive than others. Oh my gosh. No, it was, I mean, it was just so random. And then someone popped in and was like, hey, how does one go about getting mod in here? I was like, uh. You recommended that song. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Check over yeah. this song and, uh, and translate it from Dutch German to English. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then bada bing, bada boom, you get a green sword next to your name. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Boom. Yeah, you guys don't know, uh, like Dutch. I I live I live by the Amish, so I could just have them translate it for me. Wouldn't that be fun? Bring in that song <laughs> yeah. and into one of the leaders in the Dutch community and just say, "I don't know what this says. Can you can you read it to me? Just like translate it in English for oh, me." No. Yeah, I would. Can you film that when yeah. you do that, please? <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh, please. Uh, yeah, now here's the question, Zach. The community that you live close to, would you have to print it or could, you know, would, would they 
read your phone. Oh, they have phones, bro. They have okay. electricity. So you're not, they, so it's not deep, Amish. They have, mm. uh, they're not strict. You got some of those that would have to be like, I got to read it. It's got to be on paper. There might yeah, be, unless it's yeah. Unless rolled out, like. Yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some that would, but. <laughs> you, roll it, you roll it out on the scroll, and then all of a sudden it reads what Zach's saying it reads, and they're like, <laughs> I couldn't be more disappointed. It says, I rolled up in my... <laughs> I, I can't say the next part. And Oh, I, I can only I can say that part either. Hold on, hold on. Uh, dance. Uh, mm, it's something about someone's butt. That's all, that's all I've got. They would stop pretty quickly and just, I, I'm not doing this. Cowards. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, if, if going like, back to our earlier conversation about do you have the do you have the do you have the requirement the moral requirement to step away from something? I mean, I, I'll give them credit. I mean, a lot of them will step away from things other Christians won't. So yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. But a lot of them have cell phones. So mm. and Instagram. And Snapchat. Yeah. And what are you yeah. eating, Zach? It looks like a. It looks like paper mache. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's just tuna. And Triscuits. Tuna with a little bit of um of uh, avocado oil, mayonnaise, and some lemon juice, and some um cracked black pepper. And some cracked what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pepper. <laughs> Yeah, so and so, and some crack, and then it cuts out. Oh, you you can yeah. you can see it. You can see the the pepper on there is quite heavy, very dark black. Because I I like pepper. I like uh, spice anyway. But are you masking the tuna flavor? Because I feel like that's what I would do with pepper. A little bit, but I mean, I'm I'm eating it because um, I rolled my ankle a little bit when I was taking the dogs on a walk the other day. And it's good for anti-inflammatory purposes, like tuna and fish and stuff like that. But it has a ton of protein in it. Like one can of tuna is like 42 grams of protein. So, I mean, it's oh. small and it's and it's kind of lighter, especially before bed uh, to to have. So I don't have like a huge meal to digest before I go to bed. So when I was working at the mill, like uh, as a, a teenager, so basically ages 18 to like 24 kind of thing i was working there there was a, a a year where everybody every guy they seemed to they were all wanting to work out they were all going down to the new gym in town they were all trying to get as buff as possible so the only thing they ate these two guys for the entire summer was a can of tuna with ketchup squirted on it like they'd open up they'd, they'd take the lid off the tuna go with some ketchup mix it up and that's literally all they'd eat for the 12-hour shift Oh my gosh! Yeah. One one yeah, that, can. That was just... an awesome smelling dish. <laughs> yeah, one can, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the only thing incredible. they could have done to make it worse is microwave it. Yeah, because then they'd have yeah. ruined the microwave. But <laughs> <laughs> so here's the real question: How fit did they end up being? Mm. Yeah, it was the same, man. They looked exactly <laughs> the same at the beginning of the summer as they did at the end. <laughs> I mean. I think that's a win because I would have assumed they would have almost starved to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they may have gone for other food during the other twelve hours. I didn't see them. I was gonna say, yeah, they go home and they're they're <laughs> popping open the the ho hos and the and the hostess and all that all that different stuff. <laughs> okay, well, I have a quick question for all of you. I don't I don't know if any of you partook in these specific treats but were you more of a ho-ho person or a twinkie person oh ho. if you partook in those still if, am. Not, if you were more like a little debbie person what's like the go-to little debbie snack i've never had either i don't even know if i've ever had a little debbie snack really what mom was yeah. for sweets i mean i was very i was very chubby when i was a kid so i should should that up Oh, I'm chubby now. I prefer to stay chubby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a as a currently quite fat man who does not care about his health and actually and actively seeks these things out, I kind of feel bad that I don't have a good answer for you. Uh, I think I'd like to blame the fact that I'm Canadian and that they're just not pl plentiful. But it's not like we don't have Twinkies. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, in fact, because you've said that now, 
I I feel I have a moral obligation to my fellow chubby brethren that I go and finish and accomplish this experiment so that I have an answer for you should it come <laughs> up again. Uh, I'm all for you gotta that. You got to have that soft foundation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how can, how can I call myself a truly robust individual if I can't identify a Twinkie from a Ho-Ho? I don't even know what a Ho-Ho is. Oh, man, come on now. Like a cho chocolate little hockey puck stuffed with cream. That's pretty much what it was. Okay, I thought, I thought they were from pie. that song you were describing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been one of the lines, uh, I don't know. Did you, hey. Most, he, mostly he, Dutch. My my, did you guys ever see my TikTok where I was like, you know that song where you can't make a wife out of a, you know, and I I put on the screen a ho ho, can't make a wife out of a ho ho. Like, that's not the words, but it was. I, I did see that. <laughs> that's why I'm laughing. But there's a lot of pepper involved in that laugh. Yeah, there so you it go. Might be a pity laugh. <laughs> it was. I ate the ho ho. It was a great ho ho. So so is it a wagon wheel? Is that the same thing as a wagon wheel? So the ones I eat, they're like a rolled up, like look like a burrito. Oh, that's a Swiss roll. That's a Swiss roll, that's, but that's yeah. what I've always called yeah. a ho-ho. Oh. Yeah, the ho-hos are like the, they look like a little, <laughs> okay. like a chocolate cupcake that's like a frosted, chocolate frosted chocolate cupcake with like cream inside of it. But it's yeah. like dense as all get out. Like that thing will stick to the roof of your mouth. And it's just, it's a solid hunk of chocolate cake. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I feel, yeah. I yeah, feel like good. I've missed out. You, you've missed out. But and yeah, Wagon wag Wheel has jam, right? Yeah, it's got, yeah. it's, I mean, it doesn't have to, but it's, yeah, it's like a graham cracker and then like marshmallow with some jam in the middle. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that basically a s'more? Yes. Kind of. Yeah. I've never had it a is, s'more with jam. Like, bigger. I'm doing that now. Guys, I'm going to go get a Swiss I, roll. Do a, He's going to leave. He's a, leaving right now to go get it. <laughs> I can tell. Do a, do a s'more with peanut butter, Zach. Yeah. That is delicious. Uh, I've done, instead of just like a piece of chocolate, put like a Reese cup in there. Reese. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep that's I need that's a good. Coffee. See, like the wagon wheels that I've heard of, um, I have a lot of friends who are from like Australia and New Zealand and they eat these things called wagon wheels and it's like a big chocolate disc with with jam in the middle. It's like it's like their version, yeah, of almost like a ho. But they're apparently awesome. And then they have these things called pods, which literally look like Tide Pods. It's like this little uh soft, like cakey outside with some chocolate like Nutella in the middle and that's the the bite and it looks like a Tide Pod and I'm like bro these kids were eating Tide Pods before it was cool my gosh <laughs> that's where this whole thing started they got confused like oh dude I used to eat these all the time they're like yeah I had pods they taste, all the time they taste different now but I, I guess they're still <laughs> good yeah do you guys ever eat UFOs you, you ever had UFOs what's that UFOs it's kind of it's like a, a dyed rice cake cracker thingy that's kind of glued together and on the inside of the two little parts that's held together like that is like uh kind of some like some fun dip sour stuff like a little bit of powder never heard that never heard of that uh -oh. it's it, all it does it, it hits your mouth and it takes all the saliva out and glues your tongue to the top of your <laughs> top of your mouth and then hits you with a bolt of acid <laughs> Uh, instant acid reflux. Yeah. Is that a 70s treat? A bolt of acid? <laughs> Just a bolt of acid, man. Uh, what's it? Then you're smelling the color nine. Stop. All yeah. <laughs> what's it called? I'm yeah. looking this up right now. What's it called? It's a UFO. UFO. UFO snack. UFO. Oh. oh, UFO cake pops up. I tried to really? look it up. Oh no, that's I got different. Was, uh, I need to look like snack UFO cake. Side in the last All right, days. I'll. I'll find it, you youngins. UFO cake. I did UFO cake, and it's like all these people that made like these really cool, expensive cakes. Like, yeah, look, UFO ca at. look up UFO candy. UFO candy. <laughs> candy. UFO, UFO candy. Oh, there we go. UFO candy wafers. Oh, yeah, they kind of like they look like UFO. Interesting. Now you got to bring it up on screen, guys. Come on, we're we're Twitchers here. I you don't know how to do that in Discord, crowd. though. Um, share screen. 
Just do it, it almost man. Looks, it almost looks like a... Zach. It's like he's got nerd, nerds in it. Up, uh, up. Uh, wait, what do we... Apparently oh, they there, come hold with on. Kinds of, I, there's one with Pop Rocks. That's kind of rad. Let me, let me figure this out. Yeah, can you guys see my screen or probably not? I'm trying to pull it up. There we go. Boom. Yeah, I got you. Oh, geez, oh, geez. Everybody. everybody. Yeah, it's like every. I'm trying to like. It's glitching out. Ah, oh, it's unfortunate. I've got me 17 times. <laughs> I <and> know. I... <laughs> Hold up, wait, wait, I might be able to do this. Oh, oh, it's this one. Wait, what are we doing? That. Yeah, those. Right? You guys can see that. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see that. A, I see yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how do yeah, I. Yeah, that, that's in? the candy. Yep. They're an experience. If you, if you if you find them, you go to like an old timey candy store. You go go have those. They're they're really something. At least do it once. I didn't realize they came with weird other stuff in the middle. Wait, there's an ASMR satellite wafers like video. Oh right. my Gosh. goodness! Content. There's content, people, to be okay, found. I can make some content right here, yo. So yeah, so we're yeah, <laughs> dude. Screw there's screw it. what Amaranth's doing. I got the <laughs> UFO ASMR Darn going tootin'. like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Darn tootin. That, that's a good joke, actually. Oh, my gosh. Darn tootin. Yeah. Do you, you get just, the joke just you, you just made? No, I have I no idea know. what you're talking about. Not a clue. Oh. <laughs> Not a clue. Right. Inform do, me. Do, help me. Do you know who Amaranth is? The yes. ASMR yes. Girl? I've been yeah. on the internet. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been on the internet. Yeah. Um. So, uh, th this is weird. So, she she actually jarred up her own farts i kid yeah. you not a thousand of them and bro. sold them for a thousand bucks a pop bro he's a it, business it also woman. came with a strand of her hair and she sold out within seconds of announcing that she was selling them those are some thirsty dudes holy mackerel oh, who, hi, bro, who's we... that chick that sold her bath water like a couple years ago yeah, what um was that there was no. a there was a music Bill Delphine. That. That's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bill, yeah. Bill I was like, Delphine. I was like, she's, she's like a, uh, I was like, she's a Disney princess, but she's not a princess at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh -uh. No. She's from that, she's from that song. What's, that's what song? that song was about. Yeah, Bill Delphine was that Dutch song. That's what's actually the title if you translated it. There we got my, we got my ode, ode to Bill. Uh, uh, get off there. They want your tuna. Yeah, no, they do. Especially this one, this art, my little, the little chunkiest new puppy. <laughs> this guy right here, Broly, is is just he is a little tank. He will eat food all day. You put food in front of him, and it's gone. You put water in front of yeah. him, and it's dry. Sounds like, sounds like me. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I can relate. <laughs> yeah, we talk. <laughs> you making it sound like a bad thing. <clears throat> yeah, when we adopted him, the. The people were like, oh, yeah, he's going to be like maybe 50 or 60 pounds maximum. Take him to the vet. And they're like, no, nah, he's going to be like 80 pounds. He's, I was like 20, 25 more pounds more than uh, expected. All right. I, I like it. You got kids? No, not yet. No. Not yet. I, I'm, it's I'm it's always 25. fun to see the dog, the dog come flying in and just destroy an entire group of toddlers. <laughs> That's always fun. It's like bowling. <laughs> Make sure you to gotta, film it. You gotta hold him at the gate, like they do greyhounds in a race. He's <laughs> super excited and just let him yeah. fly through. Them. Yeah, the toddlers are the bunny that's, that's kind of going around the, the track. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Have you have you ever have you ever been to a rodeo where they put all the guys they sit in chairs they start to play blackjack or poker and then they let the bull run through it? Kind of like that with kids. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. This is much fun to watch. Uh, Zach, is your camera on a swivel? Like, do you have it like on? I was gonna a, say it did no, like an arm or something. Sweet. It's a webcam. Uh, I wish I wish I had a cool enough camera for that. No, I think so. My light is right behind my. I have two monitors right here to my streaming PC, and mm -hmm. this is where I normally sit it because this is what people normally see are like all these cool posters and my Bible verses and stuff because right. I have got an anime on my side. <laughs> uh and <laughs> I'm, I'm glad zach lee knows the meme that's the, one of the greatest really things kid. ever man it's so good it's so unexpected anyway and so this is this is where my light is but uh 
it doesn't like so this is where you guys are you guys are over on on this monitor mm -hmm. versus my my streaming pc because if i switch over to this one you guys won't get any of my audio but you'll get my video it's weird it's very that weird. would improve the stream considerably <laughs> <laughs> Am I, do we know each other well enough that I can make those kind of jokes? I don't think so yet. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just should save that. I'm glad I can take a joke because earlier, yesterday, I was joking with someone in my chat and they left. Like, they're oh, no. gone. They're gone. And, like, they DM me and they're like, hey, glad that's what you think of me, man. And I'm like, bro, it was, I was totally joking. Like, I was even fluctuating my voice to the point where it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and they're so, like, they're some like, people are glad just glad I got out of this. Yeah, they're like, I'm glad I got out of this community early to find out what kind of a person you are. And I was like, oh, Great. glad, <laughs> glad you're such a snowflake. Toxic. Yeah. You're toxic. Yeah. toxic. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. The toxicity was incredible. If I can hold up, I might be able to, to do this. If I put this here. I just like how interactive it is watching and you can kind of see the different angles and change and stuff. That's cool. You, you need to clean behind your monitor, bud. Yeah, it's I do. Back there. <laughs> It is dusty back there. No, you're not wrong. This 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 could be better. This this could work. This could work. Cause then you got, I like the Sonic poster. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, Solid. That, that poster. Uh, I wish I could get like better um, view of it, but like it's it's got a whole bunch of different characters inside of the graffiti. Um, and I saw it one day in like um. I went to this old like vintage uh comic book store. Because when I was um, one of my part time jobs that I did alongside of streaming was I uh, took care of people who had uh, cerebral palsy and autism. And that was one of my jobs. I'm, I'm just a bartender now. So I, I left that job because um, it was like an hour drive. Uh, and they they weren't giving me any more like payment and uh, they, they wouldn't reimburse my mileage to drive there. And I was like, uh, can't really do this. So. Like they'd reimburse my, my mileage when I was on uh, the job, but mostly we walked everywhere um, to to people's their my clients' favorite places because they usually lived by places that were uh, the only places that they knew. <laughs> and so we were in one of his favorite shops, and he loved like vintage uh, games and vintage posters and music and all that different stuff. And so we went into that shop uh, one day, and I saw this poster, and I was like, "Oh, I want to get it." And so I, so I, I, I pulled the trigger and the whole way home, the whole way home we were driving, uh, my client was asking who it was and like, uh, what, what is, uh, what is his name and all this different stuff. And he kept asking the same stuff. It was, it was awesome. I was going to tell and Chris. Is the, other one King, is the other one Kingdom Hearts? Yes. That is my favorite video game series of all time. Okay. Can I, can I just take a second to talk to you about that? because sure. i had someone in in my community buy me kingdom hearts like there was a there's a kingdom hearts like set that was that had like i don't know five or six games and apparently kingdom hearts doesn't know how to count any better than windows and, and microsoft does but he <laughs> left hold on i've he never played right any of, of the kingdom here, hearts he just off game. he goes okay so okay yeah, you mean this uh yeah the that so is, yeah that's it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got but all the games but they don't know how to count so it's really it's really confusing Yes. And so I <laughs> correct. I played the first one. So I I played the first one. I got I got I don't know like three quarters of the way through, and the story wasn't really what I would call captivating. And mm. all the all the action was just me hitting the same button until <laughs> things happen. And I'm like, this game. How are people obsessed with this game? And yeah. then nonstop, it was you got to get to the next one. So you got to get to the next. <laughs> I mean, you have to play that one. But then after you play that one, then they get good. And I'm like, but I don't like the bad one. Yeah. <laughs> No, the the hardest one to play. So even being a, a very big Kingdom Hearts fan, the hardest one to play has got to be, um, oh, it's got to be Chain of Memories, and they they pretty much were testing out this new game style. So instead of like you running through the levels and you like got new uh, keyblades from the different worlds and all this different stuff. Um, you used cards and you had a deck of cards in the bottom left hand of your screen and each number represented 
the attack power, but then you combine different numbers uh, to to make oh, you've already a lost different me. attack Holy variant. Moly. I know, I know, right? <laughs> it was so insanely confusing. I'm like, dude, seven so of I've diamonds. I've played through that game one time. All the other ones I've played through many, many times, but I've only played through Chain of Memories one time because it was not good in the, mm. the fighting. The story was great. You you went through this castle, but the uh, you had to get to the top of the castle in order to, um, you know, beat the people who are holding this girl hostage. Uh, but the further you went in the Unheard castle... of in video more, games. What are you talking more, about? <laughs> The more that's, memories that's breaking you lost. so many barriers. <laughs> I know, right? But the the further you went along in the castle, the more memories you lost. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you started forgetting about your uh, your friends. You started forgetting about uh, your family. You started forgetting about like your own abilities, even. And so it was it was really incredible story, but uh, the fighting was just awful. It was just terrible. But yes, so are you excited ball. for this new one that's coming out? I just saw like a trailer for it. And everybody the, that I knew started complaining about the size of his feet. Yes, because in all the other, <laughs> in all the other games, his shoes are like four sizes too big. Uh, like they literally look like goofy shoes um, mm-hmm. on his feet. And so in this one, it actually looks like he has correct fitting shoes. Uh, I think what I'm most excited for about the newest one, though, is the day of that the new trailer dropped, they said that they might have a Star Wars uh, le- or like Star Wars world. Ooh, it's, they can it's do that now, like, yeah. Yes, yeah. And so I was like, if Kingdom Hearts had lightsabers and like Anakin, Obi-Wan, hopefully it'd be like that stuff, but I'm guessing it's going to go with the new wave with like Rey and uh, Kylo Blah. Ren and all that. Yeah, Blah. that's the only thing. I think it might actually head that way. I wish it wouldn't. But either way, Star Wars in Kingdom Hearts would be fantastic. Can we just can't we just pretend those never happened? Like it is it not possible that they could be like, you know what, George? He, here's it back. We screwed it up. <laughs> could you? Could you? We're just gonna pretend the last the last three didn't work. Can you? Can you just just polish up this turd a little bit for us so that we can we can maybe make more people happy with it? Why can't we do that? The problem you're going to have is that Disney's going to tell you which ones you can use. And that's, that's what anyone who has teamed up with Disney on licensing in the past three, four years regarding Star Wars, the ask has been that it reflects the newer ones and not the older ones. Because mm. it's selfish, that. right? Like they, want, they, they don't want you to benefit just from something they aren't still necessarily making money from. They want to benefit from something they're currently and actively in the future making money from. So it brings awareness to the current and future storylines versus ones that are outdated. But it was a convoluted mess of like three different directors and none of them had a vision or even like Star Wars. I mean, literally the director of the first one said, yeah, Star Wars is stupid and started, you know, like he he didn't actually watch the thing. He didn't like it. And so I'm like, what do you, what, why would you, you know what? You get me all excited. It's, it's late. I need to go to bed. You guys are, it's, (laughs) It's too much. I'll take your word for it. I've never seen any of the Star Wars. Oh, Oh, man. Oh. Wow. When you say any, do you mean the last, the the latest three, right? You don't mean all of them. I've never seen any Star Wars, period. Oh. Zach, where's the, you got the boot button handy? Yeah, where's the boot remove from conversation button? (laughs) All credibility lost. You know what? I can (laughs) mute him. There he's gone. I can mute him. Yeah. Dude, done. Yeah. It is Everything you've set up to this point, I was impressed with. I was excited <laughs> to get to know you a little bit better. Now, not so much. Uh, that's awesome. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I have it. I'll just dig my hole deeper. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen Harry Potter. I haven't seen Star Trek. Wow. Listen, I haven't seen any of the Harry Potter, but that's because my parents were like, "Listen, wizards and witchcraft. magic and witchcraft." Yeah, <clears throat> that's all that's, terrible that, that's stuff. That's kind of all of it for me. Yeah, is that what, what do you like do? The the, the, sci, the sci-fi <laughs> genre, and, and now I don't necessarily like now I don't care, but it's hard to go back and be interested in something that's like 30, 40 years old. What? What? what do yeah, you like read books and yeah. play sports or something? Like <laughs> he touches grass well, in his free well, time. 
No. You keep reading books that I'm so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, comparatively. If you read books, read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> this, that's why they turned the books into movies. So you didn't have to read. What you're doing in like 40 hours, I do in two. Well, it's like three and a half with Lord of the Rings. It. Yeah, it's like three and a half. Yeah, three? Yeah, okay, three. Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back to food. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, 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 so let's stick with movies. So, oh. best movie ever made. What is it? The Lord of the Rings trilogy, no question. And that's, oh. that was all made at the same time, so it counts. There, there's, not even a, <laughs> there's not even a debate about that. That is categorically the best <sighs> movie ever made because it, from every perspective, technologically, from the director perspective, the writing, the adaptation, the acting, the CG, all of it, it was not only groundbreaking, but it u- utilized some of the greatest technology, or not technology, but like the original movie tricks that have, ever, that have been used for years. It is the greatest movies ever made. Period. Do like me some more. So. I, yeah, I'm trying to think like best, mo- like not favorite movie, but best movie ever made. Yes. Like, well, it's not. It's oh. not uh, Avatar. You know the the greatest, oh, the, yeah. the number one movie ever of all time. It's the not. Grossing, I really yeah. enjoyed that movie. Yeah. though. people made some fun of that movie though, and I was like, I actually really liked it. Well, do you remember when it came out? People were like, they were so actively obsessed with it some people would like go and they'd they just get repeated viewings over and over and over and over because they wanted to live in that universe because the 3d would whatever and how pretty it was and like they, it was like there was almost a psychosis yeah. that happened for some people to be able to boost that thing up mm. and now he's making five more yeah Is i was that- gonna say they're, they they rumored that they were gonna be coming out with all of them like around the same time like it would be like one after the other after the other but they're making them all at the same time, kind of like how Lord of the Rings. And they said, and I don't know if that's true anymore, but they were saying in the beginning that the when Avatar 2 comes out, it'll be the advent of 3D without glasses. That's the mission. Wow. Like, like real life. Yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to be like... <laughs> I experience so that right. every day. What's so us? special about it? <laughs> 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 Your point, you that, Zach, but when you're sitting there so watching, play, then, you're a saying a play. It's a play. Yes. Go back to like ancient Greece. <laughs> Go to Broadway. You'll see it. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's, that's hard. Uh, it's very very hard. What's what's fun about a technology like that when you get to the uh, you know mass production of this kind of new technology especially visual technology that's when you find out how many people are affected by this new thing in a negative way where you're gonna have people like drooling in the aisles with their brains exploding for like the first few weeks as they try to fine-tune this technology it's not going to be pretty yeah that's the way cgi was people still like loved cgi and it got better obviously over time because it looks great now, i don't mean but... quality i mean legitimately their brains are going to explode because of of the flickering and because of all the way that it's designed because really? of the way the, the it's it's hitting their eyeballs oh yeah for sure i mean you, you we have epileptic warnings on a lot of uh shows and stuff like that now because they learned you know that there are certain you know colors and patterns that are that affect people when you start throwing this you know two-eyed 3d parallax stuff at people in an action movie that's that's gonna that's gonna affect some dudes for sure. Yeah, because or like the, it'll be calling the weaker of us. Put it that way. All the weaker <laughs> people, like Chris, who doesn't watch movies, gonna go in there <laughs> and die. Will be will be finally free of these people who won't watch movies, and us strong ones who can survive can continue on to Avatar three and Avatar four and Avatar five. But we, yeah, he's not gonna, gonna watch the it, opposite. Though. Since since I touch grass, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> jump when the screen comes at me. Sure. Maybe you'll be the since only one left. Gonna, <laughs> since, since you're gonna be so so into it, because they, they they claim that in in having people kind of watch the the what they've created, that literally people are jumping out of the seats, like like it's that like intense. And I mean, they I spent it. almost half a billion dollars to build this technology. So. I love it. But that's true. I mean, it could be like reverse zombie apocalypse where where we're all a drooling mess and, and during the first show, half of society is now gone and only the people that are able to actually be outside and 
and have then, uh, seen the sun a zombie, in the I'll last be week. If I'm a zombie, yeah. I'll be thankful for those people that are, that are going to comp coddle the zombies because I'll need it. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I die first in zombie apocalypse. There's no question. I, I have, I have no cardio. I have no defense skills. I have no weapons. <laughs> Listen, I'm just gonna I, walk up to the nearest zombie and just open my neck. <laughs> just go. It's a big. Uh, put the right there. Said it early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The good thing is, is almost all of those things you can work on pretty quickly. And just buy so a gun. Just hide, hide, yeah. hide in your basement for 90 days, work on those things. And then you said the W plan. word, man. No, you said the W word. Eat I nothing but the, tuna. The, the, you said work. No. Where's the, where's the, give me the pill. Give me the give video the I need to watch so I can. But that exists now. It won't exist in a zombie apocalypse. What zombie's going to sell you a pill? You think zombies are going to be tick doing TikToks to tell you which one to buy? Zombies are already doing TikToks, my yeah, friend. True. That's, <laughs> <happening>. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Hey, you're definitely... Yes. People that are just gyrating with absolutely no purpose, with no brains in their heads, already exists. Why do you Don't do TikTok. what you do? I don't know. Everybody else does it. Oh. It gets millions of likes. Mm-hmm. Now I'm it just makes... mad again. See, I was fine up until <laughs> now. You guys made me mad again, and now I'm all sad. Hey, listen, if you do the TikTok dances, it'll make you happy, right? That's what they tell us. True. I'm Baptist. I don't dance. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, they're just even put your day hands versions in. of the Okie Pokey. Dude, there's they a... are push. They are sticking things out. That is absolutely true. They're putting things in and they're taking things out. <laughs> You're absolutely right. No question. That's a listen. That's a TikTok taking series idea. Do the dances to the hokey pokey. Play the audio from the hokey pokey and then just do the actual TikTok dance. However they go. The only problem is you got to learn the TikTok. We're all waiting for you to finish that series. <laughs> You're gonna be waiting for me yeah. to start it too. So. We'll we'll duet that thing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Right, Zach, just, you know, it's just like, you laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Zach, I got I gotta go, my man. It is it is now officially late, and I am old, so I'm gonna take off, dude. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Hey, you got it, man. Good to meet you guys. Absolutely. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, good night, nice man. to meet you. Yeah, too. Good night. Thanks for hanging. See ya. That's funny. Listen, that's a that's a TikTok idea right there. Well, you That's can either do that, or you just take all the old dances. Maybe you, maybe you, you get on screen, you grab your wife, and you do some petty cake. I have to get my kid to do that one. Yeah, there you go. You just mix them up. I mean, what were there, like 70 different versions of the patty cake? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you got a whole TikTok channel. Whole TikTok channel. Oh, my gosh. And people, people love kids, and they love... Uh... You know, seeing multiple people from a family in a TikTok. I mean, huge. Huge. And it would be like you're ancient, so it would be like something they've never seen or heard before. <laughs> be like you're inventing something. <laughs> well, this man, this man's like doing this dance where like all you gotta do is just like do this, like It's, it's like high fives, but cooler, mom. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the problem is people that are that are old enough are gonna be like, "That's the Macarena, bro." Like, what? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every, like, that's everybody what this on stuff TikTok is now. Gonna be like, you you think you're really doing something <laughs> something cool here, and then all the kids are like, "Yeah, do it again, do another one." <laughs> Macarena. <laughs> It's like the, all those older songs that they're starting to come out. Yeah. That they're like putting TikToks to and kids are like, w what is that? The Crossroads by Bone Thugs and Harmony? Yeah. I read this thing where like 80 something percent of TikTokers didn't know where it was from. What? They didn't know it was an actual like successful song. Yeah. I used to like, there were um, specific people who came in when I was working at the gym uh and when i was uh a a trainer and and life coach the the main music that people wanted to listen to my my clients was like 80s 90s and early 2000s like 
throwback type of hip hop and rap. Yeah. Like that would be it. And so Bone Thugs was on the playlist a lot. I didn't know who they were before that, but I at least experienced it because of them. And I think we're finally starting to see like the music come around to that because at some point I think everybody noticed like everything's like this cookie cutter now and you got to do this and do that. And people still listen to it and people are still listening to it. But at the same time, you're actually starting to see this happen where people are like, you know what? Let's go ahead and listen to the old music that we actually enjoyed. Like, you know, now everything nowadays, everything sounds like the new stuff sounds very similar to itself. All of it does. I mean, that's even why like um, um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy that ah, yes. that soundtrack was just seventies and eighties classics, and that was one and of the highest like, selling. So freaking yeah, insane. everybody yeah. was buying the soundtrack for Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, you guys realize this music's been out for years. <laughs> but but you know what? People people have been saying that for decades. But when you get in the nineties, the seventies music was good. When you get to 2040, 2020 music's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Like it's not necessarily because the music is is better. It's just because the music is different than what you're you listening just think to about, like, currently. Yeah. Yeah. Because even even in the '90s, like when you listen to to hip hop and you listen to the only thing that separated whether it was Tupac or Jay Z or whoever whoever it might be, as you got into like um, Eminem and Lil Wayne into the late '90s, early 2000s, the only thing that separated them really truly was their voices. Now you've got some of the most creative beats, probably some of the best music. Like I don't listen to the mainstream rap, I don't listen to his Christian rap, but when you listen to Christian rap and you see what they the creativity they've created in beats, it's better than anything that existed in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the but the 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 sound you've already like like you listen to somebody and you're like, oh that sounds like nineties Kanye or oh that sounds like Jay Z or because there's only so many so many different tones of voices and paces you can do it at. And, you know, I, I love NF, but you, you, you slip in Eminem and have him do the same lyrics. I don't know if I'd be able to tell you the difference. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities between those two. But to be fair, a lot of white rappers sound the same. Similar. Not exactly the same, but they sound similar. <laughs> well, it's in, it's in, it's intentional, right? It's it's. I think a lot of a lot of rappers, period, sound sound alike. But I think they, when you listen to like Southern rap, a lot of those guys sound similar yeah. to a Little Wayne or a Boosie. Mm-hmm. When you get into um, kind of the the Northeastern, you got a lot of guys sound like Jay Z. Or when you get into West Coast, you got a lot of guys that are sound like a Tupac or a, or a Snoop Dogg. I think so. You get these genres, right? That that are bases that are just small genres of a larger genre. And I think this might be offensive to say to some, but I think white rappers has become a genre of rap, <laughs> and they've all tried to look up to the one who you know got credit for creating that genre, yeah. and it's Eminem. So they've yeah. done so much of like listening yeah. to him and and mimicking and and picking up that pace, and you know NF has even matched the storytelling that yeah. that Eminem was so great at. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yep. I would totally agree with that. But, but then you listen to like some of the Christian ones. You listen to like Andy Minio, who you could you wouldn't be able to tell he's white. Yeah. I mean, you got a guy that's a hundred percent Italian. Uh, so, but he he sounds he sounds like you wouldn't you wouldn't pick him out of the lineup as the white guy. Yeah, there's somebody recently that I heard. I can't I can't remember who it was, but I remember like I heard their song. I thought it was a good song, something whatever, and then like later I saw a picture of them. I thought they were black from their sound. They were white, and I forget who it oh. was, but I do remember that recently. Like within was the it last Christian or was it mainstream? I think it was mainstream. I think it was mainstream. Oh, I have no clue. I don't know that I could name five mainstream rappers. Unless they were unless they were still around in the nineties. I don't know that I can name two that weren't around in the nineties. Nowadays, I feel like there's a lot 
of secular rappers. Well, it's because they, the same the same reason as Christian rappers is the whole being able to create your own music and produce your own music and put it out and publish it that didn't exist in the 90s and 2000s, early 2000s. You know, you look at a guy like, I don't know how much I listen to Christian rap, but a guy like D1 who set records for self-producing his music and for self-publishing and not having a record label. You look at a guy like Bizzle who went out and, and did his own thing and then created a record label himself. So when, when you look at those guys, like now rappers have opportunities that didn't have. And then you add TikTok and you look at the money yeah. some of these artists have made just from getting making a song as popular on TikTok. So you've got, you've got opportunities that are greater than your skill level. You just got to find an audience that likes your music. You don't actually have to make good music. That's true. <laughs> That's it's true. very true. Like that's that Island Boy song. If you guys heard that oh, one, they, 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 they just mumble Island Boy. Yeah, I, oh, so there, I, there's yeah. an actual song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, an, they, I don't they started know. out with like a song, and it, it was just so random, and it really didn't have a whole lot with being an Island Boy. <laughs> but that was like the main line that they said was Island Boy and it blew up it wasn't good at all like even like big high tier rappers like snoop dogg did a review of it and he goes but, he, he's just sitting there and he's like just he's like what is this yes like, but this just that little just the way that they said <laughs> island boy was catchy that's the yeah. only thing that's it that's the only all thing right. All right, Zach, so you're going to do those TikToks to uh, Hokey Pokey. I'm going to do you a oh, favor, and I'm going to rap the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> and the only words you're going to be able to understand are just Hokey Pokey. But you like already – the Hokey Pokey, you don't even really sing. You just kind of speak the Hokey Pokey. I know. That's why you rap it now. It's spoken word, though. It's already, it's already artistic. <laughs> Get propaganda on oh, it. Sorry. <laughs> All right, sorry. Then I got to do something that's not artistic because evidently... Um, gotta add, but like I, you have to add a beat. The opposite of artistic. Okay, so you add a beat to this. Yeah. Oh, that's all you need is a beat. A catchy beat. That's it. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> just... You just... You just got. You just got to make is a Hokey, couple words sound legible. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it's true. Is it? Is Hokey Pokey? Uh, copy. Is that copyrighted? Like Happy no. Birthday ain't copyrighted, right? No, because it's like a Hokey Pokey. A... Too old. <laughs> there are songs that are that are too old to be. Let's see if it is, but I believe it's one of the songs that is yeah, too old. It's too old to be co- Like it's. What's what's the something commons? Is it Creative Commons or something like that? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, wrong. So, Sony owns it. Oh, they do. Sony owns it. Oh, you can't even play the Hokey Pokey on a Twitch stream. Yeah, Sony. Sony bought it. Do the Hokey Pokey. Yeah. But see, the thing is. Is you just you just do the same thing and you just change it. You just make it slightly different. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm trying to find this review that like that <laughs> that Snoop Dogg. I think it was Snoop Dogg and Kevin Hart. I don't know why they're always together, but they are. Of uh, Funny, they, they reviewed I think Snoop Dogg's the most. Oh, they reviewed I think Snoop uh, the most overrated rapper of all time. Oh man, Ooh. you ain't kidding. Holy cow. I'm glad somebody said it. And not me. <laughs> I, th- I think that that is that even when I listen to, to secular rap, that was the one guy I could not tolerate. I think I think I think mumble rap definitely for me, like any of those rappers, I was all I would always put anybody before them. Like uh yeah. what's his freaking name? I, I I don't know many of them at all, but like Lil Yachty just comes to come to comes to mind. Yeah, I know you yeah, might so not know who that new. is. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what new. mumble rap is. Mumble rap? Oh my god! Well, it's literally so, what it is. It's like they mumble their lyrics, and it's just got a catchy beat. 
Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Wow. You type in mumble but, rap and it'll be like trash. My you problem know? is that all the but, beats are like super simple and it's almost like it to me I listen to these these songs and I go this is just bad. Like I'm not trying to be mean or harsh but when I think about these songs, I go, the beat is so simple that they went into GarageBand and used a kick and a snare and the and, and the hi hat that just goes, and then they're like, oh, they just and it's a song, and somehow it makes it big, and I'm like, bro, I made stuff better than this on my MacBook Pro with GarageBand when I couldn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just feel like it's just when you compare it to stuff that's that's out there it's like this is just bad i don't i'm not trying to like be mean or jerk but it's just like uh hey take it that's me anyway i think music is tough as a whole though it's like whether it's whether it's rap music or it's it's some sort of rock or hip-hop or pop or country it almost doesn't matter what it is it's for the most part music the creativity of you, and, and again, I think this goes back now to the to what I was saying earlier. With the ease of being able to share music these days, it's almost made it where you don't you, you don't have to make good stuff, so you don't have to put in the same work. You don't have to you don't have to put in, for example. And I'm not trying to. I think they're impressive. I'm not trying to to down them, but there's these two Spanish creators, um, one male, one female. I think they might be married or siblings, but they. They all they do is they just sing country music songs that have been on the top 100 billboard at some point and they just sing them in Spanish. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're, they're great, they, they, they sound great. I don't understand the words, but they sound great. But at the end of the day, they are now touring, they have now been given a contract by Tim McGraw based on just doing somebody else's work in a different language that didn't exist, that didn't exist 30 years ago. You couldn't copy and paste as easily as you can today. That's man. And again, they're talented, so hopefully they'll hopefully they have their own music. Yeah. And they were just using those as opportunities. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like they, they literally became famous and recognized by Tim McGraw for singing one of his songs in Spanish. But I I think that's kind of too how Christian bands get started too. Like they're gonna sing the the popular Christian Cups. songs. The, yeah, they're, like that's how you connect with the people that are in your audience. And then you occasionally sing, you know, your original and one of your better ones or something. And they're like, oh yeah, this band was really cool. Like covers all day. Like a worship band up front on a Sunday morning is singing all songs that are you know. But yeah. you couldn't get paid. You couldn't get paid until your work was your own. I think that's the difference now. Now is you can get paid when the work's not your own. Yeah. I mean, these, these guys are immediately, based off music they've taken from other people, immediately they're going on tour in the next three months. Yeah, and they probably already you know? can monetize their, uh, their uh, content anyway on TikTok and yeah. whatever short-form media content that they put out. I mean, it's, it's like there's... There, yeah, and, there, and there's, people, there's people monetizing um old old songs that aren't copyright and just you know just recreating them with different instruments and and so people are people are being able to copy and paste in a way that's different if you it, yes you might have gotten your start you know if you did a little you know hole in the wall bar you probably were doing some, covering somebody else's music but at some point you were going to need to produce a cd you're going to need to pr mm -hmm. produce a cassette tape something now Man you said cassette tape. Somebody by the else's way. work. You said cassette tape. <laughs> just yeah. pointing that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most people probably have uh, forgot what those are. Yeah, you got a track somewhere too. I mean, <laughs> they those aren't even that old. That just music has just progressed so quickly. Well, listening well, to technology music in general. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm. I mean, think about it. Like you, <laughs> it, it was it was what. How old am I? Let's see, so twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, that a that a iPod was so popular, mm -hmm. and now those things are really absolutely obsolete. Yeah, they don't There's exist. No such things, iPod. Yeah, yeah. 
Not even and, like I mean, MP3 you're talking players. About, I mean, it's just, it's no. all, it's gone. And that yeah. was a billion dollar industry. That industry made billions of dollars. And now in, in the same generation, <laughs> they literally don't exist anymore. Man, Steve Jobs was a treasure, wasn't he, man? Because he basically introduced the the iPod, right? He introduced the MP3 player. He then introduced the product that took out the MP3 player, which was by putting it in a new device. I mean, that ah, man, I wish he was still around. That he had an amazing mind, man. Oh man. Also, evidently, an abusive personality. Did did he did he make the MP3 player? Boy, I don't uh, know, but I, I feel like I feel like he was the first one that like actually brought a high storage volume to such a small device that allowed you to play okay. thousands of songs rather than just like a flash drive or a floppy disk that had, you know, one or two songs or whatever. Yeah, so it was so. Probably. They became the the iPods became the third MP3 player to be made. Okay. The third major one. It was made by a mathematics teacher. But yeah, it's a. Uh, when I'm curious when they came when I when um, Jobs came out with theirs. Let's see. So it took it took it took Apple eight years to come out with the iPod. Eight years. Eight years. They perfected that thing, man. But I'm curious if he if he purchased anything because that's that's what a lot of people forget about Steve Jobs is he wasn't that intelligent as far as creation. He was intelligent. At, at finding the people that did the things that he wanted to accomplish. So he had a vision and he knew how to take the people that could create them and yeah. bring them in. So I wouldn't be shocked if he took the people who created the first MP3 player, hired them, brought them in, or even purchased the, the intelligence from them, yeah. and then turned around and started working on it. I don't know that, the, that Steve Jobs has ever invented anything himself. Well, and I feel Everything like... Everything he did was he took and created and built on things that already existed and made them so much better. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think he revolutionized. Yes, the product. He's an innovator not in. For not sure. yeah, innovator, not inventor. Not inventor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I agree. And he might be one of the greatest. And again, I don't think he did most of it. But just just for for namesake of what he's tied to, he's probably one of the greatest innovators in, in at least in American history. Hmm. He didn't did invent the computer, you... but he did quite a spectacular thing with it that changed the entire game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause you, cause you think about anything else, like when you, when you look at things like a, an airplane, airplanes are faster, they're, they're, they run differently, but of it, essentially they're not really innovated to be anything that much different. When you look at the telephone and you look at the computer and you realize that both of those are now one and the same. <laughs> and music player and television when you think about like him being at the forefront of innovating those things in a way that in 1980s you could not imagine having a phone that could play music that you could watch tv i mean that, and that's the yeah. size of your hand, size of your hand. Like, yeah this this size yeah, yeah. going yeah. back to what we were joking about earlier is actually like, <laughs> that would have sounded like something something from the devil yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> People in the eighties would have been convinced that yeah. that was the work of the devil. Yeah, yeah. I've I've thought about that a lot. Um, where like with a phone in general, like and, and video games and stuff too, is like what would people fifty years ago think about like if they got transported to right now and the stuff we have, the technology we have, you know, like the first like 
the first Disney films, the first Mickey Mouse, first Bugs Bunny, and how they had to put these things together with projectors and multiple clips. And, stuff. and now we're just like, hey, listen, I'm just some guy that lives in Ohio, and I can make that exact same thing in just a couple hours from scratch. I, Rather I, than needing yeah, an entire think... studio of people. I'm just saying, like, I wonder what people would think, you know, oh, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they'd be so, and, and this is just, just, just with some psychology background, I, I believe that they would be so overwhelmed that they would be more suicidal than our current generation. Because when you, and I know we look back like they're mentally tough and everything, but when you look at how simplistic things were 50, 60 years ago, when you look at the fact that, you know, I, you know, uh, I know one of you have kids, one of you don't, but, but Zach, I know your kids are young. My kid, you know, my teenager. So for me, like watching what my kids experience in social media that I didn't experience in the 90s, mm -hmm. like that's significantly different. You, I could sit there and you know, call them weak or, or sensitive or whatever, but my daughter can be bullied at school. I could have been bullied at school. I can go home. I might get bullied at home. But my daughter, she goes home, that bullying follows her anywhere she's got a cell phone. Anywhere she's got a laptop, anywhere she's got an iPad, you know? And so, and if, it's, and if she doesn't look at them, every other kid in her class is looking at them. So she goes to school the next day and there's a whole new layer of bullying that existed the 12 hours she was sleeping. Yeah. That like, that, that happened, right? That happened. Like you, you didn't go to school the next morning and say, you know, how have I been bullied the last 12 hours? You just started with a fresh new bullying session that morning. Creativity. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, so, so it's a totally different thing. So I think when you think about, you, you take, you take, let, let's say, let's say our grandparents, you take our grandparents and you fast forward them into, into this type of living with the childhood they had, it'd be absolutely overwhelming because they didn't get eased into it. It would be, it would be so drastic Yeah, yeah. that it would be hard, to, hard to comprehend. I got, I got bullied in school. I switched schools and everything, although I probably didn't need to, but I did. Like, yeah, it, it, it didn't follow you like it can today with social media, like you're saying. Yeah. It's absolutely so, true. So, my, so I think it was two years ago. So my daughter, she was getting bullied, and they went and started making TikToks about it. So then she gets text messages um, on her or message wherever they are on her iPad saying, hey, these people are making making entire TikToks about it with her face on it. Right. And so in the time she should be resting, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night as she's going to bed, she's getting these messages and these things elevate. And I'll, and I'll add another touch to that. Right. Like where kids are in these things and. And my wife is a federal law enforcement with crimes against doing crimes against children. And for her, when you realize where kids are these days and the things that happen in schools, the, the age at which kids become, and just to keep it light and PG predators that again, we didn't have to deal with, right? We didn't know, we didn't know what most of those things being said. Most of the things in just Zach's um, song earlier, we didn't know what those were in 10. <laughs> now most 10 to 15 year olds do know. And so now you have all of these levels that that stuff creates that our grandparents would be absolutely overwhelmed with. Yeah. Yeah. I Because it's layers. Yeah. Totally. I totally get that. Totally understand. That. It's, also the, it's also the same thing with um, like, uh, especially in like, it's more on, on my Twitter feed. I don't know if it, it would be on your guys' Twitter feed, but like, uh, I follow a lot of like big names in esports and uh, and a lot of FPS players and things like that. And some things from FPS players' pasts are coming up now, or just in general, like streamers, content creators. A lot of things from their past will will come up because they were on the internet, and the internet never forgets. <laughs> and so, <laughs> some people are like permanently banned or ultimately never uh looked at or even thought about when it comes to certain things because of what what they did five ten years ago 
which is just, it's absolutely crazy. And, and I think what's craziest about that is the internet is the most forgiving place and the most unforgiving place at the exact yeah. same time. So you can do something absolutely crazy. You can be, you know, I'll say internet, but you know, a little bit of TV too. You can be dogged about him at the prison for a hate crime and still get a TV show. You can be James Charles who was flirting with children and, and still, still come back and be a millionaire. But, but at the same time, if they find a tweet from 10 years ago where you said something at 15, 16 years old that was questionable, expect to be canceled for a year so yeah. it's super forgiving you will get you you can get back to the same fame after roughly a year you know david dobrik you know the the fact that he is you know has pretty much been proven in some civil lawsuits that he was aware of um some abuses of young ladies being taken place in his presence and yet he he, he came back he took what three four five months off and he comes back with the same you know million dollars yeah. It's forgiving and unforgiving at the same exact time. Or it's like uh, that one that one content creator, the the YouTuber. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I think it was like Slim or oh, IC just or recently. Like, oh, I guess Speed? yeah, yeah, just Speed? recently. What was it? Speed. Speed. Maybe that Speed. was it. Because he was on. I'm pretty sure he's a YouTube streamer. Yeah, YouTube streamer, and uh, he's super young, like 16 maybe. Or, or something like that and uh he was like like saying some really really off the cuff things during a game and he was like really belittling this uh this girl in his lobby uh and things like that and he was like really going after her and like pretty much made her leave the game and all this different stuff and so uh it was pointed out and now that now he's unable to ever play a riot game for the rest of his career like they they banned him on valorant and they banned him on all other riot games ever Pre or and past that, present and future and that's the unforgiving part right is like so yeah. the forgiving part is if he goes and plays <laughs> fortnite and has success the internet will forgive him oh yeah the unforgiving part is is, is you never know like i tell i tell all my parents, especially my young ones who are anywhere between you know 14 and 25 like if you haven't done it yet Go, go, go delete your social media, start fresh, or go delete every single post because at 14, 15, 16, 17, even if you didn't tweet something offensive, you tweeted something ignorant, right? <laughs> I mean, probably all the way up to 25, right? Like you, yeah. At any point you can, and here's, here's the thing, it's evolving. So it's not necessarily just the fact that you tweeted something ignorant. It's the fact that what is ignorant in five years may not have been ignorant when you tweeted it. So the evolution of what is offensive or what is insensitive, the fact that that happens, and it can be selective, right? So like you've got, you've got people that get canceled for certain things, but then you've got Steve Harvey who has several offensive videos making fun of Asian people, but it's okay, Steve Harvey can do it. And so... The, the, the kind of evolution of not just what is offensive and what isn't, but then who, it, who, who it's acceptable from, who it isn't. Like, so yeah. anything you tweeted, like you don't know what's gonna change in the five years before you get to be 25. And it's probably gonna be at the peak of your career. Well, because that's when people are gonna go back and look at what you've said. <laughs> yep. Yep, so, so mm. you, you're gonna start, you got to start scrubbing that stuff or out yourself and just say, hey, you know what? I've been looking back at my tweets and there's a lot of stuff on here and I sucked and I was a, and I was a terrible person. And I want you to know that's not who I am. And before anybody brings it up, I sucked and I apologize. Because otherwise, somebody's going to out you at some point. One day. Yeah, and I feel like people, they look back at like five years ago and... You gotta you you gotta look at like where things are at at that point because things have changed. But I feel like people don't look at that. They they act like you've tweeted that thing today, and it's like, no, that was eight years ago, and I was a fourteen year old. One, it was stupid because I was immature, and 
too that's you know that was acceptable then and and it's that's what's frustrating to me sometimes i think zach i think that's a oversimplified way to look at it i think that's that's looking at it from a christian perspective and i think we have and, and i agree with you so i'm not saying that that's wrong but i think that we have com- you know we've made things so complex and i think you know we see this going with the world being so secular today is that it's, can I see the consequences you got from your actions, right? So as a Christian, you should believe that the consequences aren't, aren't important here on earth. They're important at the end of that, right? So when we look at that stuff and, and, and you look at like a lot of the backlash and it hasn't gotten a lot of heat, but a lot of the backlash on Mark Wahlberg, right? Because yeah. Mark Wahlberg committed a hate crime and he didn't get the sentence 30 years ago that people think he should have gotten, right? And so... And it's not necessarily the fact that he committed it. It's the fact that he's had success and fame since. Because he wasn't, he was, he wasn't wealthy. He was broke. He was poor. He, his brother hadn't, hadn't you know, started his, his success yet that would eventually pull Mark Wahlberg into it. And so I think it's that whole thing of us being addicted to what do we think the consequences should be. And when you look at it, it directly opposes what we should believe biblically at the, in the Bible. And, and you can see that direct correlation of if we, if we believed what we should believe, and that's the, 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 the juror, the, the jury that matters is the God above and, and, and not our peers, but we don't. So therefore, what matters most is, do you have consequences I'm happy with? And if you had success, you probably didn't have consequences I, I feel good about. You should never have success if you made a mistake I don't like. That's that's frustrating. Because <laughs> like, just, well, I don't know. It man. is, but it's where we're at. Like, I, it, it is it's unfortunate it's where we're at. I mean, there there is there is nothing. And 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 you know, I know we got a little political earlier, but go back to politics, right? So you you watched this last week with the Supreme Court justice. Regardless of how you feel about it, at the end of the day, again, the argument was about what, what if, if the consequences match what certain people believe the consequences should match to. Yeah. That, that's that's, that's kind of where we're at in all things, right? Like almost everything you see that's drama related, right, is about do the consequences match what makes people feel good? What makes people feel safe or, or whatever, whatever the word may be that, that you can fill in for good at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's not, a, it's not about fairness it's not about love it's not about anything that you can find biblical it's all about the things that directly oppose those things those values that are biblical which makes sense 100 percent. 100 percent. i don't even have i don't have a response to that because i'm just like you're right and i i just like frustrated by that man well and i think to go back to like something something christian ninja said right is like we were talking about before just that got on we were talking about the um kind of nestle and hershey's and some of the industries that completely you know have child labor and slavery and stuff like that and why do they continue in the u.s and so kind of to his point like how do you stop it and I think it's the same answer that I gave him for that question is that if we want to stop that type of judgment, if we want to stop that type of pettiness or whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, if Christians united to the fact that forgiveness is important and what forgiveness looks like, and I believe that forgiveness is a part of grace. So I teach that grace, grace is kind of your lead action for every Christian. Grace should be your lead action. Because grace includes love, grace includes forgiveness, grace uh, includes an open mind to listen to somebody else, to share back, it, it, it includes the courage to share. And so I think that if we, if we showed each other grace, those things end, right? It, and it doesn't even have to be all Christians. If just 51% of Christians, right? Just the slight majority of Christians showed the grace to go out and have those conversations, to go out and listen to people, to go out and, and show that love, to show that forgiveness, 
we're supposedly 75% of the population in the U.S. So yeah. At the end of the day, what are we doing? Yeah, right. And and I know that, that Christians, I mean, at least in America, can do this because there was a thing a couple years ago, something with Chick-fil-A. I don't remember exactly what it was, but like Chick-fil-A's around the country had lines around yep. not and, and it was for some specific thing i can't remember what happened i don't remember but i remember they, tweeting uh, go ahead yeah the the founder the founder uh truid kathy um he came out and said that he would never support or donate to anything anything or anyone who supports gay marriage yeah and That's he said he was right. he was heavily opposed to it. Now here, here's where I'll I'll give you a really hot take for me personally, and this is where I believe grace and Christianity exists. If you supported, now first first and foremost, the Constitution should be that important to a Christian, right? It should be it should be important to maybe some things in how you live your life, but it it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a breadwinner in your priorities. But let's say that you believe that people should be able to express themselves. So you, you support Chick-fil-A. You go out and you say, hey, you're one of those people who joined the line. You're one of the people who went. And you buy more Chick-fil-A now than you ever would have if they hadn't caught that flag. Well, then, do you give Colin Kaepernick the same respect? Not necessarily right. purchase his stuff. But do you give him the same grace and love to say, right. I respect the fact that you have that right. I do mm-hmm. not agree. I do not support it. I will not purchase your stuff. But... I will not villainize you. Yeah. Because at that point, that's where that's where Christians look like hypocrites. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And and I've talked to my dad about this before too. There was something where uh it was something that was Muslim related was banned. Maybe not banned, but it was looked down upon, however, because it was Muslim related and I I don't know how exactly the conversation went with my dad, but I remember saying I don't like that. And he's like, but why not? Because you're getting rid of, you know, this Muslim outlook on something. I said, yeah, but at what point then does that turn to Christian as well? Because they'll be able to just ban whatever Christian as well. And so it's one of those things where uh, believe you should be able to believe freely in, uh, you know, different beliefs, so. not because I think that they're right, but, I want to be able to talk about Jesus to you. Well, so, let, like, let's there's take that this a step back, though. So, you're thinking of that. You and your dad are thinking that as a nationalist, right? As a, as an American, as somebody that is looking at it from an American perspective. But let's go further back. Let's look at it from a Christian perspective, right? So, where in the Bible, anywhere in the New Testament, that that where Christianity is created by Jesus Christ. Where in the New Testament does the Bible say that we are to conquer or defeat any other faith? I don't know. It doesn't. It does doesn't. It? There, there, there's nowhere. So a lot of Christians look at Muslims or whoever is like, we should use laws to, like, to, to suppress them, to defeat right. them, to conquer them. But in all honesty, the, Jesus Christ tells us how, how to not defeat how to reduce the numbers of Muslims, and that's through the love of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. because yeah. they want to be Christians. Yep. It's not through defeating. It's not through conquering. It's not through taking. It's not through suppressing. It is through the opposite of all of that, and yeah. that is love and grace, yeah. and that is how people change. So, so I've been in situations where I've had employees that are that are of other faiths, and I and I'm I'm overtly Christian. There's no one who's met me that isn't in the same room as me that doesn't know that that's how who I am. Awesome. I've had phenomenal relationships with those people because at the end of the day, I respect them. I have a team member right now who is Muslim and going through Ramadan. We have moved his schedule and we have made exceptions for him as a Muslim to experience his faith the way that he needs to experience his faith according to his faith. Mm-hmm. That does. If I suppress that, what does that prove about me as a Christian? Yeah. If I tell him, "Hey, man, you can't do those things," right? Because I don't agree with them. So therefore, I'm just going to make it difficult. That proves to him that Christianity is wrong. Yeah. Christianity is the enemy of what I believe. But if I say, "Hey, I absolutely respect that," so let me make sure that's 
that's easy for you. Let's mm-hmm. move that around. Now, his, his, his belief, and I don't know what his belief is, so I'm putting words in his mouth, but my belief is, is that he's more likely to see the kindness of me as a Christian than he would have if I'd have just said no. He, he, there's no chance that if I'd have said no, he'd ever believe in Jesus Christ. Right. But there's, I believe, a, a larger chance that, that he could believe in Jesus Christ because of that, those experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know my sister, she, she's in um, cosmetology and stuff, and she was in, uh, it was when she was in school, there was, uh, there was a gay guy that was, that was next to her a lot and stuff, and you know, she was openly Christian, she would share her faith with him or whatever, and I remember one thing that he always said, he wasn't a Christian, but he always said, you know, I've never had a Christian treat me as a gay guy the way you treat me, and that was definitely, I, I don't know if she ever invited him to church or not. I'm not sure. But I remember she tell she told me, she said, we're actually friends. And, and it's because I treat him as a human, you know? And, and she's like, I mean, I, I know that that's gotta, the fact that he had said that to her is like one of those things where, you know, that affected him in some sort of way, having that relationship rather than just, you know, I'm a Christian, you're well, gay. And and, 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 and that's the thing, right? Is that there's no, there is no, and, and I'm using this word different than, than what could be tied to the Bible, but there is no oppression, suppression, or conquering or defeating in the Bible. It, it just, it doesn't. There's nowhere where you're instructed to defeat all gays, to defeat all Muslims, to defeat, right? It, it, it is the exact opposite. It's to love them, show them who Jesus Christ is, mm-hmm. and, and hopefully pray and create a community that will lead them to, to the light, to that path. Yeah. And so if I'm carrying a if I'm carrying a big old you know sword or a big old bat or a big old firearm or whatever it is, and I'm going and saying, hey, you've got to believe this, where where does it get you? I mean, look at the number of Native Americans that resent Christianity today because of the forced Christianity in the late 18, early 1900s. It's a pretty high percentage that will tell you they want no part of Christianity because of that experience. If you go and you look at the, some of the stats on the growing anti-Christian movement in the African-American community, a lot of it ties back to the fact that the, the perception is that Christianity was forced on the slaves. Hmm. Now, it's not true. That's not, it's not fully true, but there is enough truth to it that people feel they were, that they're generationally forced into it. So why would I believe it? So the conquering and forcing and suppression and, and all of those things opposing to love and grace it long term it doesn't it doesn't save souls yeah. it probably costs it probably costs more than it saves and again i know it's a hot take but that's that's my perspective <laughs> no i i i agree with that i mean i i just it's it's like you said you you disagree but you're still going to um you know respect them as a human being i mean that's yeah, yeah. Good stuff. I mean, you, you can't you can't have you can't have grace and love without uh without respect. That's something that for me has um. It's been made aware, I guess, in myself. I don't know. Within the last couple of years, is just the the importance of human life, regardless regardless of anything and everything you are a human being and your life matters i mean yeah i i it was uh, there was a lot of stuff on facebook at one point about um black lives matter and then there was the blue lives matter and there's uh, just all that stuff i'm not trying to get political there but somebody made somebody said something about you know the lives that matter and i'm like yeah but uh, like it was it was something about i forget exactly how it went but i remember talking about how as a christian yeah every life does matter and i made the reference to hitler and i said i know he's a bad guy i get that but his life mattered hitler mattered (laughs) like he's a human being that's where you know 
I, I was having this, I think I was having a discussion. Somebody was like, you know, the black lives matter again, all lives matter. And it was this whole thing back and forth. And I was like, yeah, but even and, like even Hitler's life mattered. I get, he's a bad guy, but you know, like he, he's a human being. <laughs> I won't go to I won't go to Hitler because I don't want that hot of a take. So I'll give you <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you something that I shared with a lot of people when Kobe Bryant died. Um, when Kobe Bryant died, you know there there was a there was a thing amongst Christians and conservatives of like his past, right? Like he had the the accusations, he had the affairs, he had all of these things, and so people, you know, and and supposedly was a devout Catholic and. People, people were super, it seemed like conservatives and Christians were super discouraged, right? Of like, why is he being celebrated? This guy's a terrible human being. I found a lot of, I found a lot of um, excitement in my faith from Kobe Bryant. And I'm not a Kobe fan at all. I, I think he's the most, one of the most overrated basketball players of all time. Ooh. Um, and, Ooh. That, and, and that's not my hot take. Hot take. But, I was going to say. <laughs> that is a hot take. That's though. a hot take. But, but I, I, think, I think that what, what excited me about Kobe Bryant's life is that this is a man who was a Christian. However you feel about Catholics, Christian, right? And then this is a man who sat and said, and most people don't know this because it wasn't hot enough to make all the media, but if you look it up, you can find the interview. He shared that he sat at the, at the civil lawsuit of that young lady and he watched her in another room from a camera, watched her share her story of what happened. And he said, I do not believe I did those things, but I believe she believes I did those things. And so I believe that I should ask her for forgiveness. I believe I owed her an apology because I could tell that in that room, whether I felt like I had done those things or not, that she seemed to be telling the truth. And in that, he talks about going to priest to priest to priest and asking for forgiveness and struggling with infidelity and struggling with sexual um, temptations and all of these things that a lot of Christians have a struggle with. And he's openly saying, I'm asking God for forgiveness. I'm asking to be forgiven. I'm going to wise counsel and priest and asking for help. I'm asking for the guidance. As a Christian, that should be an extremely exciting thing to think whether or not you believe this man did these things. Let's say you assume that he did it. He was guilty. To me, it's exciting to say he could be guilty. He could realize he was wrong. He could ask for forgiveness and he can still be in, in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And I find, that, I, I find that to be extremely rewarding of a thought. Now, I'm not saying he's in heaven. I don't know. But the fact that if if his words were true, if he had given his life to Christ, if he had asked for forgiveness, that man very well, no matter the number of affairs, no matter the truth to, to what may or may not have happened, that man could be sitting in, in heaven right now with his daughter. Hmm. And that's, that's empowering. That, that, yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I and didn't instead, know. I think... As Christians, sometimes we look at it and go, well, if he's in heaven, that's not the place I want to be, right? Like, I've, I, I, I've heard that, I've heard that, like, over the past four or five years, it seems to be a growing trend, right? I'm going to decide on, on whether or not I want to go to heaven based on who I was there. But that's... <laughs> I'm the opposite, man. And, and Me I'm too. I'm not going to but, but if, if, there's, if there's someone that was pretty far out there and gave his life to God and ended up in heaven... I find that to be I find that to be empowering. Yeah, that's, that's encouraging. Because <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, that should almost make you want to. That should almost make you want to be there because yeah, you're noticing how lost some people were, and how good of a God that you are praising and celebrating is to the fact that um, that they could be forever uh, with Him. Like that, that should make you want to go there. Sure. Amen. And, and here, I'll add one thing to that, just Zach. Is like, here, here's, the, here's the best part of that for me is that to your exact point is that in the, in the United States specifically, we are a world chasing acceptance. We are a country, a nation chasing acceptance. And now, to your point, you have a God that is accepting everybody. 
right? If you if you deem him your, your God, if, if you give him your faith, yeah. it doesn't matter what you did. He accepts you. He loves you. And to me, like, I, I wish that we'd have more conversation about that because I think at the end of the day, that is what everyone is chasing. That They're chasing the acceptance. But when you look at heaven, I truly believe, and I know a lot of people have a lot of beliefs on heaven that some people believe there's like 15 people there and some people believe there's 15 billion people there. Regardless, I believe that you will walk into heaven if you have a memory of history. It, it, you'll walk into heaven and go, that guy's here? Yeah. That person's here? Really? Right? And, and I think that that's, that's, for me, that's convicting. Right? It's, it's, it's you give God your faith and let him do, do the work. And it doesn't matter what you did before that. That, and, and that's what's encouraging. Like you said, we're chase, that, that's I love that. that we're chasing this acceptance, and yet the God of the universe is the one that's going to accept, they can't accept all people. And yet we're like, mm, well. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like we're, we're worried so about some random point. people on the internet. And yet, who, I don't know you, but I could know the God of the universe. And he, like, it, I'm speechless to that. Like how, that makes no, like, well, but and, we're, and sin, we're sinful think, humans, and, and that's... Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we we will literally do anything to oppose anything. And so, so, so we want acceptance, but then on the flip side, you look at, like, to get that, we want to somehow just bar away from expectation. So um, all three of us here are married, right? So in our belief, we should be, we should, there's a certain expectation of a husband and a wife. And I think that if you look at that now... There is a very growing population that believes that if your spouse, male or female, tells you that you cannot have affairs, that person is selfish and you should remove yourself from that marriage. Right? So polygamy is one of the fastest growing trends in the United States as of this moment. And it is one of the main reasons is, is that you should be able to still make all the decisions that you would make if you were single including including the, the 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 passing yourself around and so i think that when you look at that we will do anything so we have someone who accepts us we have someone who loves us and 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 hopefully as unconditionally as humanly possible and they're they're giving their commitment to us and that's not enough that's not enough eh, nah I, I i need more well what more can they do well i, I want to be with other people well so you literally want the one thing they can't do for you. No matter how much counseling they do, how much they try to improve themselves, you literally want the one thing they can't do for you. Hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. And so the acceptance has to be from the masses. It, it can't be from one. We're getting to the point where it has to be from multiple people and almost any topic or subject. And I think that's why you're seeing like more pastors get caught in affairs and things like that is that that all of that has become addictive and and something again i think that churches have struggled to discuss is that that is a that is a that is a current issue of there's never we're getting to the point of having temptations that can't be solved because of the chase for acceptance in a way that that didn't necessarily exist prior to social media My dad said the TV show Friends is the ruination of America. I disagree. I think it's social media. <laughs> what do you want me to say? You tell you, I've never seen. I've never seen Friends. <laughs> it's a bunch of people sleeping together. Is basically the show. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's yeah. It's. I mean, it's got its funny moments, sure. But oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's. Uh, yeah, it's um pretty crazy. <laughs> sure, there's a number of TV shows prior to that too, though. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. 
I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not like Friends was the first provoc. I mean, if, if you ask, if you ask my mother, she'll tell you this: The Simpsons. The Simpsons. Was, I wasn't allowed was to watch that growing world. up. Yeah. My parents my, told my, me about that though. They said that the kid, which was Bart, was disrespectful to his parents, and that's why I wasn't allowed to watch. So, so my mom went a step further. There, she believed, and and it's funny because I have some some shared belief in that today but she believed that the the cartoons were specifically used to target children by pretending to target adults so it's supposed to be more of kind of a an older adolescent adult show kind of like the family guy ended up being but when you but by being a cartoon it was molding the minds of children that makes sense. Though. And when you look at the st- stats, there were millions of kids that watched The Simpsons. There are millions of kids that watched The Family Guy. And depending on what, what you believe, it's, it's, it's a possibility that you believe that those are things your kids shouldn't be watching. But they're, they're performed by being animated in a way that is intended to attract your children. So she believed that that was the beginning of evil. <laughs> Or today's evil <laughs> was was Simpsons, huh? Yep, the Simpsons. Yeah. Simpsons. I was I I wasn't allowed to watch Gosh. that show. And Not I'll tell I. you what I yeah, I, wasn't. I never did either. Never a lot of the shows, episode. the ga- the video games, I wasn't allowed to play as like a kid or whatever. I've eventually played them. I've eventually watched different shows. Whatever. Simpsons is one that I never did. Also, Harry Potter. I never watched Harry Potter. So. Never watched or played anything my mom was against. I and, and it was never not at least not that I didn't do then. Like well, we were talking earlier about Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. Like I kind of out myself. Like I I shoplifted that that CD when it came out <laughs> nice. because I knew my mom wouldn't let me buy it. So uh, so funny. I literally stole it yeah. um, because because like like I I needed to have it. Like I needed to hear it and. You know, and, and I was a high schooler at the time when it came out and it, everybody was listening to it. So there were moments as an adolescent where I did it. But like I've never went back and had any curiosity about The Simpsons or and to this day, I don't watch any animated shows. If it's if it's animated, I won't watch it. I think animated is intended for children. And we've <laughs> made them adult and they attract children. So as crazy as I thought my mother was when I was a teenager, I've now found myself in that same lunacy. So, so you don't you don't watch anything animated? Nope. I've never Tell watched me. anything animated unless I'm watching it. I'm gonna be honest. You sound like you don't watch anything at all. No movies. No no <laughs> animated TV. Like, yeah. She pr- so I watch a lot of educational stuff, but oddly enough, I won't watch documentaries. Um, but I I, I probably watch just too much like like realistic like kind of like drama thrillers things that like can humanly happen. So not too crazy, not too wild, not too too dark. So no, nothing horror related with you know de- demons coming out the walls. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah I, don't, I don't like that either. Yeah. Yeah. Not a big fan, not a big fan. Yeah. The only the only thing that I think that that like my mother would tell you she'd argue is demonic that I would watch would probably be zombie stuff. Ah, uh, like, like seeing Walking the Walking Dead. Dead. Yep. The train, train. So we we're talking earlier about best movies. I think Train to Basan, Basane, however you say it, is one of the best movies that has ever been made. I gotta tell you, I'm a big fan of um, the movie uh, Gladiator. I'm a big fan of that movie. Not, I'm not saying it's like the best movie of all time, but that's definitely when when people ask, like, oh, you know, if you could pick three movies, you only could pick three movies ever to to be able to watch like that might be one of my three and i mean you gotta think that movie was that movie was in what 2000 2001 yeah it was early 2000s and that, and that movie was incredible hmm. like like so yeah it's at its time <laughs> I'd, I'd sadly and and i don't think i've watched it as a christian but the movie that i've most enjoyed it was the boondock saints I thought that was like the, the greatest movie it. to ever be made. Never uh, watched it. What up, Billy? What up, B. Gilbert? How you doing, man? Oh, doing all right, man. What about you? Not the B. Too Gilbert. Bad. 
Got See the whole, we got... whole nice little setup over there yeah. and, and everything. Got the got the kids spot behind me, and I'm trying to do flooring over there. So <laughs> yeah, your flooring project's coming along, man. Yeah, little by little. Little by little. Love it. It's uh, it's it's been a mess. Kudos to anybody that installs uh, floors for for a living. <laughs> See, and I always think that, too, about stuff like that. And then I'm like, you know what, though? If they do it for a living, they're doing it day in and day out. I'm doing it one time. Like, I recently That's fixed true. I recently fixed our refrigerator. Or I think I did, anyway. I'm hoping. Like, it was over-freezing or whatever you call it. It's definitely Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I'm like... The freezer's not a refrigerator, but it is definitely this guy, Yeah, this one guy online is like, it'll take you 45 minutes. I'm like, okay, I expect it to take me at least an hour. I was underneath that refrigerator <laughs> for three bad. hours three hours <laughs> sounds right i'm like any professional would have had this done way sooner just because they know what they're doing so i would apply that to your floors too if you were doing them every day you'd have that done in 45 minutes man <laughs> yep yep See, my, my wife is one of those people that can watch a youtube channel or watch how to do something and then she'll turn around and she'll like towel our bathroom <laughs> and then i'll watch it for like nine hours and yeah. have somebody train me how to do it and like the tiles would be stuck to the to the sink or something. <laughs> She's like, "How did you do that?" And I'm like, "I obviously did it wrong." That's how. I'll watch the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. YouTube taught me everything I know. She's like, "You do know you have to sit it down and stop watching it at some point, right?" <laughs> uh, that's funny. It was definitely helpful when I uh, when I installed my first uh, ceiling fan. I was uh, it's it's right above me, and I'm like. I still look at it sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool now because of me. <laughs> yeah. I'm officially a dad. Never mind. It's, it's, I've already been a dad for nine years, but you know, I've installed a ceiling fan. I'm officially a dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, mean, I even tweeted it out the other day. I was like, hey, I fixed my fridge. I feel good about myself. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's a tweet you're ever going to see from me. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything I'm going to fix this. I mean, it's like, <laughs> like I try the simplest things. My we when me and my wife first got married, we, she wanted to hang a portrait of us of the wedding, and I'm like, I didn't grow up handy, so like I'm trying to figure out how to get this nail into this wall. And I just figured if you hit that nail as hard and as many times as you could, that's how it's done. You right? You hammer the nail. Well, we had to call a handyman to come and fix the hole. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, but me see, and fixing things probably is happening. Yeah, see, then my <laughs> wife, she just so the people that owned this house before us, I they hung photos the craziest way. They had these things that were like the size of like a dime in the wall, and like when you oh, take yeah. that out, you're like you got these huge holes in your wall. Like what in the world? So she's going through and like filling them and painting and all this stuff. So she could have fixed your hole in the wall. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, B. Gilbert, let's do a quick introduction. So, I guess, who are you? What are you doing? Um, like, introduce yourself however you want. And uh, sure. then, like, what are you doing as far as in the content space? Uh, so, I'm uh, obviously B. Gilbert, as we've established, but uh, married, a uh, dad of three. Uh, they're all under 10, all boys. They, uh, they keep their hands uh, plenty full. And um, recently started leading a small groups on uh, on Wednesday, and uh, of course when I stream, I stream uh, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Thursdays. And Sundays now for the Rocket League uh, team, uh, Armor of God esports team, and um, I'm I'm basically on all the platforms because I chose to give up my affiliate status because we get to reach uh, more more potential people in the dark. By being on all the platforms and, and that includes linkedin too people's like linkedin uh-huh linkedin too <laughs> that's awesome um, i listen i don't know i don't even know how to use linkedin they're like oh it's just another social media platform but for like networking yep. I, I i haven't I talked to, to a it. single person on it i don't mm -hmm. understand it like people that are like looking for a graphic designer they're like, because I have that written in my profile, or whatever. They're, they're like, hey, I'm going to be a friend with you. I can't help you with graphic design. I'm not, I, I'm not, it's not freelance here. Like, I don't know. It's weird. I don't, and I don't, so I don't get it. I don't know. I'm weird. I just don't understand yeah. LinkedIn. 
And then it, I follow Tim Tebow, not as good so as it used to be. yeah, I, Tim Tebow will post occasionally. I'm like, okay, so I'm supposed to post on here too? What do I post on here? It's I'm, a again, I'm not Facebook. a. Yeah, again, I'm not a freelancer, so it's not. Oh, look what I did with graphic design! Like, so here's what you here's what you do, Zach. So when you finish those TikToks of the hokey pokey, you go and post <laughs> okay. them on LinkedIn. Okay. I I, pro- I promise you, you will get you will get career opportunities you've never believed. <laughs> Professional kids entertainer. Uh, hokey pokey on TikTok. I got it, man. I got it. <laughs> Just make sure you start with your left foot, not your right. I know your camera's reversed here, but you know. Yeah, we're gonna wrap Straight. it first. I need yeah. a I need a wrapped, a produced and wrapped version of the hokey. Pokey. No, we can't. Sony owns it. We what, Sony just... owns the hokey pokey. Yeah, Sony owns the hokey yeah. pokey. Yeah. I think you were grabbing two. But could you, but could you do like a that. parody version of it? Is that even possible with a almost parody song? Yeah, it's a parodied song. It's the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> yeah, how would you even do that? You could make it Hawaiian and call it the Ahi Pokey. That you could do. Put your left fish in. Put you your right it, fish out. Asgardian and call it the Loki Pokey. Yeah, there you go. That's low key fire. <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make you choke on your water. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be choking no matter what. He'll just blame Pepper. <laughs> yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. Yes, that is all gone though. That's that dish is <clears throat> done. The dogs even licked it clean. Like, how, so how you feed, you let your dogs like eat like tuna and stuff like that? Or how does that work? Is it like just fish or like just um, tuna? I mean, or? they will pour like tuna juice on their stuff sometimes. Uh, but, but other than that, we try to, we try to really limit their, their people because they, they're just a bunch of begging monsters. <laughs> oh my gosh. Most dogs are, to be fair. You can't, you, I mean, Broly's our new one. He's four months. And so he, he doesn't exactly know how to beg, but he knows how to really get on your neck. And so, like, he'll climb on you and, like, lay, like, you're holding your bowl in front of you, and he will, like, get his yeah. arm somehow, like, on your arm, and you're, like, trying to hold it up and put him and, like, eat. And, yeah. He, he knows exactly what to do to get the bowl down to his level. Yeah, just annoy you enough that you just give him food to go away. Yep, to get him off of your level. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I feel like I feel like my son is like that. Like when I'm holding him and I'm trying to like do something, he's got to like get into it as much as he can. He's he's a year old. As much as he can, just, just it's like he does it to to annoy me. Like, ha, ah, see what I can do, dad? I'm like I know what you can do. Yeah, right? They'll do it on purpose eventually. Don't take another step forward. (laughs) Oh, don't I I meant don't take two more. Yeah. Or 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 he'll decide to hop. I didn't take a step. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't take a step. (laughs) Listen, okay, so my stepson, he's five, and he's starting to pull these things, and I'm just like, listen, dude. I was a five-year-old boy just like you. I know the junk you're trying to pull. I get it. But it's like at the same time, you almost can't really prove it. So it's... Mm -hmm. But it's just like things he'll do, and it's just like, no. (laughs) But I didn't do it that way. (laughs) Yeah, but you were getting... You were trying to... You know. It was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. (laughs) You just got... You got to find ways to just outsmart him. So like when my daughter was... Oh, she was five or six, and she would go into the pantry and she would take candies out. Like she would wake up in the middle of the night and just go get candy. And so we had told her no. We were trying to teach her that it was theft, and so we taught her that there was consequences to her actions. So I went and bought these amp these um, Tabasco candies. Uh-huh. Ooh. <laughs> and, yes. and, and 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 filled it up with Tabasco candies. 
It's awesome. She nice. comes running in, screaming and crying, waking us up at like 4 a.m. And she's sweating. That's she's awesome. tears crying. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't know what's happening. She's got the face like you can tell, like she thinks she's gonna die. Oh man. Yeah, like if you, especially she if she doesn't she know just, what's happening, like yeah. <laughs> so she does she's screaming, right? She doesn't say anything. She we wake up, she looks at us and she goes, I ate some candy. <laughs> <laughs> Told you there's gonna be consequences for your actions. <laughs> yep, That's yep. awesome. I'm trying oh, to teach problem candy. Yeah, I'm trying to teach the consequence <laughs> thing right now. It's 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 tough, man. And like you use the word consequence to a five year old, and he's like, I, I'm just going to keep doing it anyway because he doesn't know. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, my, my, my oldest one, when he was three, uh, I don't know, he's always been kind of uh, ahead of his grade level when it comes to intelligence. Like, maturity wise, he's, he's very much the age he is, but intelligence wise, he's always been kind of smart. When he was three, he's like, here, put this mask on. It was a dragon mask. So I put it on. I didn't think anything about it. He starts hitting me with a sword. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, you're a dragon. I'm slaying the dragon. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, all right. I can't even be mad at that. Yeah. <laughs> Just a reason to hit. Yeah. Hit you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it was. I was like, all right. Touche. <laughs> Loop, loophole. Your consequences for becoming a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So become a dragon and you're safe. That's I was uh, I was almost speechless. I was like, well, "What? What just happened?" That's it's one of those where you just about it. I'm like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, that's one of those where you're just like, "Well done, but don't do that again." <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to tell sometimes if if kids are uh, uh, exceptionally intelligent or. or if they're like so dumb, you can't figure out how to outthink them. Because <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll come out like the most clever things that you're like, that was brilliant. But then you think about it, and the next day you, you, you see them with their finger in their nose, and you're like, no, he's not that smart. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This guy outplayed me. I can't believe it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Like, they, yeah. One day they outsmart you, and the next day they're picking their nose. Like, maybe they're doing it at the same time. Well, I'm smarter than you. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be rough. Three boys. That's oh tough. yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, for sure, the the oldest two are really smart. Uh, so they're they're in the the oldest one is in third grade, and he's uh he's in, in the gifted program. Because apparently they test them at, in third grade, and the other one's in first grade, and he's already reading uh, like twenty-two chapter long books and things like that. Wow, and geez. I'm just like, oh gosh, I mean, I'm in trouble when they get in their teens. And the middle one, he's so he's so technical. He gets he gets it from me. I I, I can't get the me out of me. But um, <laughs> it's like, man, well, not not everything is is. A and B. Sometimes there's that gray area, and 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 he's uh he's he's about as truthful as they come to. Uh, I, I like to share two stories uh, on him. Um, one, I asked him just out of curiosity if he knew who Superman's weakness was, or what what Superman's weakness was rather. And he's like, "Oh, Wonder Woman." And I just I lost <laughs> it there. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> And then, uh, that's great that's and, awesome and then, and then like we we moved to alabama uh like two years ago and there was this there's this girl Shame. like two two doors down and my oldest one kept calling her a boy and like i said he's he's honest and he's just technical and it, and it is how it is there's no filter um and he's he's like tells his brother he's like hey why do you keep uh, calling her a boy? I know she's not pretty, but she's still a girl. <laughs> I'm like, <"What?" laughs> I was like, oh, jeez, oh, no. I'm in, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. <laughs> I know she's not pretty, but she's still a girl. Still uh, a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that sounds like it would be like a movie line right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that sure. would not be like a movie line of like er the early childhood portion of a movie. Oh my gosh. 
Oh yeah. That like Perfection. that's like little rascals right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just little rascals. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, they're they're best, but I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think I think with boys, it's uh, you kind of get that once they get to like ten, you got to get that where it kind of they even out a little bit to about fifteen, mm-hmm. and then they 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 go into be uh, tiny versions, probably some of the worst versions of us ourselves oh, as oh, men. Yeah. And oh then, yeah. The the girls are the exact exact opposite. My daughter, she, I think from like man, eleven to fourteen was like. I I told her one day I said, you know what, you're my child, and I think God wants me to love you, but I really don't like you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're not my cool. <laughs> <laughs> and she still tells a story. That story that like she she just like she was mean. And now she's gotten to this thing where, like, she won't she won't hang out with other girls because they're, you know, posting half naked on on mm. TikTok, or she wants to go and she wants to um, donate time at, at a Down syndrome um, home, and so it's like like watching her at fifteen versus versus boys, it's been like significantly different. Like you see this maturity, you see this like she's 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 already planned all of her. All the stuff she's got to do for a resume to get into Harvard, whereas wow. the boys, I've, I've, I've got a of the same age as her. He's fifteen, and him and I talk every day, and it's like this kid's like waiting for the for everything to land in his lap. He's like, I don't have the plan for that. I'm gonna be a millionaire. How? <laughs> How? He's gonna be a high school dropout at this point. Yeah, he's, like, he's convinced though it's gonna figure itself out. I've been that way most of my life, honestly. I'm like, you know, and I, and I feel like Michael Scott in the Office because he there's a line where he's like, you know, I thought I'd be like a millionaire by the time I was 20, and then I was 20, and I still wasn't a millionaire. So I thought for sure by the time I'm 30, I would have a yacht. And he's like, but it wasn't by 30, so I'm hoping that by like 40, you know, like, well, what are you doing, you know? And I feel like that sometimes. I'm like, you know, I'm just hoping that it'll happen, you know? <laughs> I told my wife once, um, so in October, I moved out to Oklahoma City in about a six, 12-hour decision. And so living in Phoenix, make the decision, have the offer, all of it happened in less than 24 hours. And uh-huh. I was literally in, in, in DFW in Dallas, um, within 24 hours of the first offer decision and then being there. And so, so my wife and I talk about faith and she goes like, how, how do you just jump, jump into it like that? And like, how do you have the faith to do it? And I said, you know, honestly, I don't know how much of it's faith and how much it is I'm just comfortable flying by the seat of my pants. And it's easy to call it faith. Like God's got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's used to me doing this. He'll, he'll <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> Lay, I'll land on my feet. It'll be all right. Yeah. Well, you, well, you, you know, the, 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 the good thing about this, and that subject uh, in particular has come up in, in our church a few times, is, you know, that you, you have people out there when they're praying about something, they're, they're wanting the answer to fall on their, on their lap. And sometimes God is just like, make a decision. I can work this way. I can work that way. Just move. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not moving until I get that sign. And, and God's just like, just, just, just move, trust, you know. I need you over there in 10 years, but to get there, I need you to first take a step, just pick a direction and we'll lead you there. Well, it's like, we tell, we tell God like, Hey, hey Lord, um, I'm, I'm going to send this prayer to you. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask for some crazy bold things, but what I want you to do is I want you to do those in this box, yeah. right? Yes. Like I want to stay living in this house. I want to, Stay, stay in this situation. I want to have the same friends. I want to be close to the same people. I want to, I, I want to have the same comfortability. Don't change any of that. <laughs> but somehow, like, make all the rest of this happen. And, Keep and then, comfortable. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it's like, wait, wait, why are things getting complicated all of a sudden? Why are things mm-hmm. tougher? And it's like, well, I mean, you, you, you kind of have for it, like, quite literally. Absolutely. It's like I, I like the the illustration, like when people pray for 
people pray, you know, you, you ask God for something, and I use the illustration of a garden. You pray for a garden, but you're not willing to go out and start building your garden. You just want it to appear in your backyard. Sometimes if you get you get pray for a garden, go start a garden. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's sometimes it's just it's like uh, it's it's it, to your point. It's like we we go. You know what? God 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 takes these birds and helps like grow things, right? So birds take seeds and drop them all over the place, and that's how a lot of things happen. So you know, Lord, if I just throw the seeds on the patio, <laughs> you'll figure out how to get them into the ground, right? fall through the cracks and I got, you know, yeah. <laughs> you'll figure out the water. I mean, you, you do make rain. You'll figure out the sunset sunlight. Like all I got to do is just put the seeds out somewhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, you, you picked up and moved from, you know, wait, where did you move from? To, and then you said to Oklahoma, Phoenix. right? Phoenix, to Oklahoma. Yeah, I moved just from Phoenix. Yep. Kind of on a whim, huh? Yep. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah, it was uh it's been it's been good. My wife gets out here May 15th. So just uh this is my first day in this house and we uh we got this a few days ago and we're excited to be in Oklahoma City for at least a year. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Congrats. So it's uh my, my my wife is struggling with it. She's uh my wife is one of those people that um Grew up believing security looked like the same job, the same house, the, you know, very, very constant things. And so now she's she's been in federal law enforcement for 14, almost 15 years, and she's going to leave law enforcement. She's leaving a state she's lived in her entire life. Um, so there's a lot of change. There are a lot of changes. She's going to end up in a whole new, you know, job, whole new industry, doing things she's never done before. Uh, most likely, you know, right now she's probably going to be a contractor and a consultant, which means she doesn't get steady paychecks like she's used to. And that's way out of her comfort zone. And so it's uh, it's it's exciting because it'll I think she's going to grow from it a lot. But it's also, I think, a little, little bit terrifying from her because it's literally everything she opposes at once. <laughs> Well, tell her that she's a seed and God is growing her. There you go. <laughs> exactly, right? Just go lay out in the yard. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she'll, say, she'll, she'll be like, I don't need to lay in the yard. You're just gonna, at some point, Chris will just throw me in it. Like, if, if God's using birds to drop seeds, he's using me to just place her in uncomfortable situations. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because <laughs> that that's been like ninety percent of our marriages, and and you know, thank God that we've came together through it all. But her and I are polar opposites in that. Like she's one of those people that needs all that constant, you know, consistency. And for me, I'm, I'm I follow whatever I believe my where my faith leads me, and I follow my heart. So there are times where, like, I just came home and said, hey. I gave up that big client or, Hey, like the, we had, we had a, a huge struggle. And I think it was 2014 where I'd gotten this like massive client. They wrote this massive check and then three, four days in, and I find out that the, the guy who runs is just a massive sexist. And so I hand him the check back and, and, and write him a check. But anyways, hand him his money back and telling him like, Hey, I'm done. Like not, not fulfilling this contract. And I get home, my wife gets home and, and I'm home, and she's like, why are you home? And I'm like, well, kind of unemployed again. She's like, we just got this client. She's like, like, how, like, how could you get fired? Like, it's not, it's not that type of gig. And I was like, well, I quit. And she's like, why? I'm like, well, it was a sexist. And she's like, you couldn't deal with it for a little longer? <laughs> Give me two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and now she's kind of just at the point where she's like, like she, she expects that. And I think like she's even in her own life, she's like, you know, her own decisions. She's putting some of that kind of forward where she's trying to just to, to, to Gilbert's point earlier, trying to just trust God a little bit to say, Hey, sometimes, sometimes that move is out of our comfort zone. Almost always will the big moves be out of our comfort zone. Yeah. 
Because if it didn't require faith, he wouldn't ask us to be faithful. Absolutely. That is true. Well, anyway, should we end here for tonight? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I was just going to say, I didn't even realize that it was already 1130. Oh I know, gosh. man. It's it's 1230 for me, and I'm like, oh, That's, no. <laughs> I've been you're trying in Oklahoma, to... so you're... Or a Blessed Saints is in Oklahoma, so you're yeah, central, central time. as well. Yeah, where, where, where are you at? Are you? I'm in Alabama. Wisconsin. Alabama, uh, so you're central as well. Yep. I'm Eastern. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm in I'm in Wisco. I'm I'm in just outside of Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, okay, I was I was there um, at uh, Volk Field, uh, the, uh, the base there, mm -hmm. um, a few years back for some training that I had to do with the military. Oh, okay, awesome. Pretty pretty nice area. Yeah, no, it's a it's a nice place, and I I mean. I have no idea where the the future may may take us. I'm I'm honestly hoping to um to soon hopefully, I don't know. It's it's a very big goal and dream, but like to to become a a member of either 100 Thieves or Oni Studios as as yeah, some man. of you know or all of you know, uh which one is Oni Studios is in Texas. It's in uh Austin, Texas, and then uh, 100 Thieves is in California. It's in uh, Col Culver, California, Culver's, California, or something, something like that. It's outside. It's like a suburb of uh, LA. Okay. Yeah. So two very, very different places. But that's that's the goal. That's honestly the, the big goal. Yeah. Content creation is to. Um, yeah, that's huge. I think man. That's super awesome. Cool to, to spread the gospel and to um to to have someone who is uh. Who is showing God's love at, like, from that level of a content creation? Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Amazing. Well, I think there too. There's also that um, that angle of even the people that you're, you know, you're hanging with. You know, like being mm -hmm. able to talk to them about that kind of stuff too. Yeah, and, being able to talk to the big, like, big creators yeah. and the the people who like are in charge of these businesses, like, on a daily basis. Yeah. Like just, you know, getting into those deep conversations with them and uh, creating lasting relationships with them and being someone who's, you know, who's there for them in that aspect is would be amazing because, I mean, I want to make friends with these people because they're cool. At least I think I think a lot of them are cool, and uh, I don't want to just be become friends with them because they're famous. Although that has its perks. <laughs> for sure <laughs> I, I think the cool part is and, and you know I, in kind of working with Christian content creators the last couple of years I think that one of the things that surprises me or has surprised me is just how many of the content creators you wouldn't expect to, to be Christian <laughs> are Christian and I'm not necessarily saying that um, we should mimic some of what they do that make, would make you think they're not Christian. Mm -hmm. But it, it's interesting, like, if you, were, if you were in a room, just, Zach, with certain people, like, how much influence you could have being that there, there's a commonality there, but not necessarily a positive role model there. So, like, there have been some of these, some of these large creators, and there's, there's one I think of quite often, and He's got 10 million YouTube subscribers or seven, eight million somewhere on there. And him and I worked together for almost a year. And a lot of it was, we, we kind of talked about Christianity and we talked about the Bible. But like, when you look at like his creation, what he created, you wouldn't have expected that. And I think it was just the fact that like, a lot of these guys find themselves isolated away from what they believe to be other Christians. So then they just kind of hide it. But when you bring it out, like I think you, if you watch enough Tim the Tap Man, there have been spots where when people bring it out, he brings it out. Yeah. Unfortunately, he just doesn't, you know, isn't surrounded by people bringing that out in him. But I think that there's, there's a real place to like, not just you have an impact, but make people comfortable to make a similar impact for Jesus Christ, which, which I think is probably the most exciting part. 
Yeah, no, that's that definitely. It would be it would be so amazing, honestly, just to um, that and, and to to even like pick some people's brains about that stuff because there was one like uh, you had said like if you go into a room of creators, sometimes you don't even know that they're a Christian. One person that like surprised me the most was just last year. I found out was swag. That's like the biggest thing. Like if any of you guys know about the um the Call of Duty space, swag is one of the biggest creators out there, phase member. Um <coughs> and uh like it was just like three simple words that he tweeted one day. God is good. Yeah, I saw and that. I was like, what the heck? I was like, he's a Christian? I had zero clue. And he does it quite frequently. He like he tweets like God is good or God is great um or or like uh god is fill in the blank uh every now and again and, I'm, and that it's just something that that took me by surprise because i just saw swag and i was like okay fun entertainer like loud dude would be super super cool to hang out with but then now that i know he's a christian i'm just like that's that's just such a cool thing to to know it just like adds more to um who i even know who he is hmm. players I, I don't know if any of y'all watch uh i won't drop any names but like australian creators so yeah. there's a lot of australian creators and in, in australia there's a a little bit di- i think the u.s is headed here but a little different than the u.s and just like what is obscene so you know, there's there's a lot of of f bombs in a in a in a content cre- in an Australian content creator's content. There's a lot of profanity, and so there's a lot of times it's like, at least from my perspective, it was like, okay, um, you know, Australia is not necessarily a Christian nation. These guys probably aren't Christian, and getting kind of referred to some of them, like most of them believe that Jesus Christ is their savior, um, and and a lot of them lead much more Christian lives then when you watch their content, you would believe. Because I think they, they and it's not necessarily that they, they do anything crazy on, their, on their, their content. It's just that for Moz, for, for most Christians in the U.S., when you see someone being that profane, dropping that many F-bombs and maybe a GD, you, you, we tend to assume that, you know, they're probably not living a, you know, quote-unquote godly life. But it's, it's been pretty amazing for me to just kind of open my heart up to say, okay, there are, there are kind of doors to this, right? So there's, we've, all got, we've all got a door of darkness. And, and some of us got, you know, several doors of light, depending on your, where you're at, your maturity, your walk with, with Christ. But we've all still got that door of darkness, right? That's a, that's a, that's a thing that every single person has, Christian or not. And so it's interesting, like, when you're working with them these years, like, man, like, this person's real. Like, this person truly seems to believe Jesus Christ is their Savior. This person genuinely seems to, to care about others, love others, put, put work into loving others and showing grace. And so, it, so it's something that, that has really kind of transformed how I see other people is that you just never know. You, you never know where someone's at in their life. You never know where someone's at in their walk with Christ. And you never know how you're going to impact that walk, good or bad. You could kick them off. You can drop kick them off the path. Yeah. Sorry, Zach, I think you were trying to wrap it up and <laughs> we oh, just started a whole other conversation. No, it's all good. I, I was actually thinking about that. I made a comment on this last thing and I'm like, I, I was trying to shut it down. Oh, well, I don't care. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But I think we will shut it I down mean, here, though. You're the only one in the future, so. I know. I know. Hey, listen, it's. True. I was just about to say happy Good Friday to all of you, and I'm like, wait, I'm the only one on Friday right now. Currently, yes. <laughs> Currently. Yeah, if you, if, if, if you stay live for another 27 minutes, we'll all join you. <laughs> True. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying so I'm trying to do this thing real quick real fast I promise it's fast uh trying to do this thing where I'm trying to go to bed like at midnight and wake up at 6 a.m I feel wow. like I'm I'm I want to make this schedule that I can rely on I'll tell you what it's a whole lot easier going to bed at midnight than it is waking up at 6 a.m so yep 
Very much so. I, I just sort of keep talking, though. I found this thing. I watched I watched a uh, TV show Shark Tank, right? I love this. I love this show. I watch this show. There's this guy on there makes this bracelet that shocks you, and so it's supposed to help against bad habits. So, like, I bite my fingernails, and he's I like, yeah, if you bite, you bite your fingernails, he's like, what you do is every time you go to bite your fingernails, you push the little button, it'll shock you, and your brain will eventually understand, like, Hey, every time I want to bite my fingernails, there's pain associated with that. Don't bite your fingernails. And your brain starts to figure this out or whatever. And then you stop biting your fingernails or you stop smoking or all these things. Like, yes. It's like Pavlov's dog. It's dog. actually called Pavlock is what it's called. Or no. Wow. Yeah. Pavlock, I think, or something. Anyway. Yeah, but it's that same idea. And none of the sharks bought it. They, they're they like, you're a bunch of baloney, blah, blah, blah. I went on their website. I'm like... I got to buy one of these things, man, because like it also you can like the newest version of it. You can set it to uh, to a time that will wake you up in the morning. Like I'm laying in bed 6 a.m. This thing's going to shock me and I'm going to wake up in the morning. The other cool part about this is that I don't wake up as quick to my alarm clock as my wife wakes up to my alarm clock. So this is silent, right? It's going to shock me awake. And I will get out of bed and she is still sound asleep. And I'm like, I need this thing, man. <laughs> it's like 200 bucks. And I'm like, I don't want to drop $200 oh on a bracelet. Gosh. But it like connects Bluetooth to your phone. Like, I'm like, listen, I've got enough bad habits and I want to wake up in the mornings. This might be worth $200. <laughs> have, so, you been, have you been shocked by the results? I haven't bought it yet, but I've been shocked by the price. Yeah, my wife. My <laughs> wife says a dog shot collar works just as well. It's cheaper. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they they have Bluetooth. They, they have Bluetooth. Have, <laughs> they do have Bluetooth. True, man. So, so stuff that I started doing, Zach, was I really struggled getting up in the morning as I've gotten older. And so, if I want to get up at six at five a.m., I'll take a a eight ounce, six ounce, whatever the smallest is of a Red Bull. Chug it and go back to sleep. I'll be up in <laughs> yes, an hour. I am in. I so am in on this. Like if you have like an espresso maker or anything that would create high caffeine content, or a Red Bull, wake up and have it have it sit next to the bed. I just chug it. I go back to sleep, and in an hour, like I'm so like so much adrenaline pumping, I'm up and can't go back to sleep. I'm gonna do a five hour energy. <laughs> oh my god! That actually might be great because <laughs> what it. I mean, it, it increases your heart rate. It does all the things that prevent you from sleeping. So then yeah. once you're up, once, once you wake up at six, you're not going to want to go back to sleep. <laughs> That's true. I, this, that might actually work. Although, how much, how much, am I going to have to buy $200 worth of Red Bull? Because <laughs> oh. this bracelet is $200. So, like, oh. I'm trying to outweigh this here. Okay, but know? here's the thing. You buy the $200 bracelet and it doesn't work, you're stuck with it. You buy one Red Bull, you try it. You're only stuck with five bucks. That's a good point. I'll try the Red Bull or first. Or five more energy. They're like a buck fifty. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. I haven't you try tried it for five days. You know if it's worth it. Yeah. Or just Listen. get your raise and use uh, cold Mr. Zach Lee. Oh, Bam. Yeah. This man. This man knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. I uh, uh, first time I ever did a five hour energy. Right. I tried this thing. I I drank the thing quick. It was like, all right, we're moving on with life, whatever. And like a half an hour later, my heart is pumping. I'm telling you, I could feel it through my entire body. Okay. Like, you know, when you like kind of sweat, you got that little bit of stick on the back of your neck and down your arms. I had that too. And I'm like, what is happening to my system? I read the back of the bottle. It's like, oh yeah, for regular strength, drink half a bottle. Like mm. you could have put that in bigger letters. Somewhere on the bottle. <laughs> I drank the whole thing. They taste terrible. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not the best. Taste. They're not the best. They're not the best. They're not known for taste. No. So <laughs> so I don't I don't know if, if any of you are old enough to remember this, but like the first one of the first major energy drinks to hit the US, at least as energy drinks started to kind of climb, was Mountain Dew Amps. Yeah. So it came in this small, tiny little four ounce can. And so they came out like sometime in the mid nineties. 
and they at the time they had the same warning like you're only supposed to drink one a, a day or something like that and man we we went and we like down like six or eight of them my gosh I, I swear i have never other than that time ever heard colors and seen sounds <laughs> but man i i could literally see the words come out of you <laughs> everything looked like sesame street oh my gosh <laughs> uh, that's awesome that's oh awesome. my gosh i'd probably freak out i would be out of there <laughs> i i i thought i again it was, it was new like you didn't really know anything about energy drinks so like i was convinced that i had just like taken acid or something yeah like i was convinced there was like a narcotic in there what yeah, I mean, was, been, there might have been yeah you're right there, 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 what if, what if there was, yeah and i mean it was like the original can't, can't, coke yeah mm-hmm. yeah there go there you go i mean I've, caffeine is a is a pretty pretty heavy drug when you think about it yeah yeah i um i was sick a couple of days ago and i drank like just nothing but water for like three days. And I, like at one point I got a real bad headache and I was like, you know what? I haven't drank coffee in the last three days. I drank coffee. The headache was gone. I was like, dang it. Like at that point I know I'm like, Oh, I got to really cut back on this coffee thing or something. But I like coffee. Yeah. So <laughs> if you're going to cut back on coffee, you probably shouldn't do the red bull. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just won't drink coffee anymore. I'll just drink. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna change it for the energy yeah, drinks. Yeah. Only the Red Bull. <laughs> and coffee sounds it's like, good. It's like saying you're addicted to weed, Zach. But I'm not gonna smoke the joints. I'm just gonna eat the gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, hey, I'm let, real quick though, those little it. UFO Triple. things that Christian Ninja was talking about, those UFO thing, candy things. I was like, huh? dude, bro, these look like little edibles, and he's like talking about how like. You just like, yeah, well, I was like, that's probably what it was, bro. It's like your mouth gets all dry. I'm like, yeah. yeah he, he made it sound like it was like LSD. <laughs> I know. Like, <coughs> he was talking about there being a trip, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, I'm not bro. Googling this. Yeah, you're like, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like we had some sketch candies back yeah, in the day. Yeah, right? Jeez. <laughs> I mean, we did have candy cigarettes. It's true. That is. Yes. Funny. Yep. <laughs> it's like every single every single child pretended to be their parent or grandparent smoking a cigarette. Yeah. My uh, another that's another one of those things that my parents were like, "No, you're not getting those." Like just that pretending of smoking in your mind was like like they were just like, "No." How did they feel about toy guns? Nope, no toy guns. I mean, I had the yeah. occasional like Nerf gun, but it was very much you're not shooting people. Like my son, I don't care. My stepson, he's got tons of guns. You don't shoot people. Like, and so we kind of. The other thing is that my wife's family, they're all into guns, so they're all about the gun safety and everything. So we kind of use his Nerf guns to teach him the gun safety, which then you know. It, it allows the whole, you know, you don't shoot people and this and that and all those kinds of things. It's it's helped out with that, but you know, it's he still has his guns. He has plenty of them, and just you don't shoot people. And I'm like, see, my parents, they could have done that for me. I could have played with my guns, you know. Yeah, I never had guns growing up. And you could have watched Pokemon. I know. Shoot just the won't put them in my pocket. Sh- yeah, shoot the Pokemon. <laughs> Come on! This just writes Huge. itself, man. That would have went together. Oh man, my gosh. they're bad. <laughs> so when they're on your TV screen, you shoot. Yeah, there you go. Man, like duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you just get little Pokemon characters. <laughs> You're just blasting them away. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right. Well, I think we're gonna call it here. How's that sound? Sounds good, my man. That's good. Huh? Thanks for coming out, guys. Have a great absolutely. Have a great rest of your night. Yep. A great rest of your Thursday, by the way. You guys, you guys got a few minutes. So. 
Yeah, 15. Yeah, happy Good Friday and have a happy Easter. How's that sound? Yeah, you guys you too. too. Yes, y'all too. I'm sadly going to be lonely. My wife is going. She's going where? Visit her family. She's going to Omaha to visit her family. She's taking the dogs. I have to work all weekend, so. Oh. Yeah, oh, it sounded for a yeah, second there. Good. It sounded like you were gonna have like this awesome stream schedule for the weekend. Oh yeah, it would have been great <laughs> if I hadn't have, had to work uh, two seven-hour shifts at my at the bartending job. Hey, there you go. I mean, hopefully, I'll get paid well, but you never yeah. know. Plenty of time to stream. Aren't drinking for Easter, and I get no tips, and yeah, I just come back all <laughs> sad. True. I think people will use any reason to drink, so I think you're probably good. <laughs> Especially in Wisconsin. Like, okay, so there's like cheese and wine. Do people in Wisconsin do like beer and wine, uh, beer and cheese? Like that's a beer and cheese. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's like, Isn't there stuff. a major Have brewery? Had, seems like a good Wisconsin? combination, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of micro breweries in Wisconsin, but there's like Miller. Miller Light. Know. Yeah, Miller is like the biggest one. So you say I knew there was like a major beer that was out of Wisconsin. Yeah, Miller Miller is huge. Like people drink that over Bud, but like there's a ton of microbreweries. Like literally any small town you go in, there's probably a microbrewery there. And then you said beer and cheese. There's stuff called beer cheese soup. Like we, That's we make exactly soup. what I was thinking of. Yeah, we make soup with <laughs> beer and cheese. That and sounds really amazing. It Does is, it taste it is like dense. Beer? Uh, depending on which beer you use, usually some people use like wheat beers, uh, that are a little bit more nutty. So it's like creamy and nutty and it's really good, but see, I don't like the taste on how much you use. I don't like the taste of beer. Like I'm not a beer drinker, but like it's to me, it's like when you put like beer in something or with something, it's just, oh, it's so good. Like, yes, yes. Like that stuff is just like so good. Cook them with coffee, Zach. Anything you'd cook with beer, cook with coffee. Really? Do a co- do a coffee brat. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm cutting out the coffee for Red Bull. So can I do Red Bull? <laughs> I mean, if you can cut it out for Red Bull, you can eat it instead of drinking it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're already creating all these little loopholes. It cooks all the caffeine out. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, yeah. Man. You need to tell yourself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. It's a magical All right. drink. <laughs> All right, well, you guys take it easy. Have a great night. Have a good night. Hey, you, you too. Have a God good night. Thank you. Yes. Take care, guys.